TikTok, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. It's your friendly neighborhood philosopher here, D. Wood. And with me now is the one and only apostate prophet. Uh, it's been pointed out by such important figures as apostate Aladdin that AP is the leading voice of the ex-Muslim community in the world, second to none. There's not even a close second behind him. Oh, and so indeed. some some may call him the apostate king. Indeed, that's true. That's true. Yes, how are you doing, David? What's up? Was that a Barbie shirt? What? So, let's see your shirt again. You just stretched and then this. Uh -huh. Well, have you never seen a, have you never seen a Barbie doll before? Was that a was that an is that an attempt to win the favor, to court the favor of apostate Aladdin? Yeah. You think you think he's going to be, oh, well, if the apostate prophet is super pro Barbie. Well, look, uh, it has been recently pointed out that I have been very offensive and that I have been very insensitive, very harsh, um, very rude, very brutal, very, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So I decided to change my ways and approach things from a more uh, compassionate, more soft, more pink more Barbie-like angle. And so I, I decided to go this way. And I, I think that this is this is a good development. That is powerful, powerful development. <clears throat> so Barbie, I mean, uh, AP. <clears throat> yes. Uh, you can't call it Barbie. Yeah. Have you heard about this attack? Have you heard about this attack in Russia? Oh, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. Um, I did hear about it. Uh, first of all, what, what Instagram pointed out is uh, it's you. Can, we can be very quick to jump and call it a a terrorist attack, but I would personally discourage uh, doing that and always give it the benefit of the doubt and always understand the other side in this in in such attacks. Uh, because you might want to call it a terrorist attack, but from the perspective of those whom you define as terrorists, this uh, was not necessarily um, a violent act or an evil act. It was a good act uh, because in the end, this ter this attack didn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, there are reasons behind it. Um, you could say that this is a resistance movement and a desperate attempt to resist the oppressors, the colonizers, Russia, who, let's face it, uh, occupy a lot of indigenous land that is not theirs and have all also been for, for a decade now uh, unprovoked attacking different resisting forces within Syria. So, um, and, you know, you don't get to decide how oppressed people defend themselves, right? So uh, they may defend themselves as they defend themselves. You are in no position to judge them. And if, if, it is op if it is resisting oppression, then they may do it whatever way they want. How dare you? How dare you speak against it even when the deaths are almost ex exclusively civilians? Yeah. And... Uh... I would estimate, AP, that about 5% of our viewers just took you seriously. I would say, I wouldn't say that it's 5%. Uh, if, if, a, but, yeah, if, yeah, apostate, if apostate Aladdin is watching, I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe he's defending terrorism. Oh, I think he, not he, may, <clears throat> he may be joking, although it is very unlikely. I can't See understand. That? See but that? even Did... if he is joking. <laughs> See that? Did AP join the Democratic Party? No, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just acting exactly like the Free Palestine crowds. Yeah, we do. Uh, that is exactly what we hear after. And guys, uh, you know, as AP is pointing out, you have the people who will condemn the October seventh attack and and then you know call for ceasefire or something like that. Say, okay, you know, we condemn that, but enough's enough over here. But then you have the people who will just straight up, well, who are we to who are we to judge how the Palestinians defend themselves against terror? And if they go just slaughter a bunch of people at a concert, what's wrong with that? But then some of these same people will, oh my goodness, I can't believe that someone attacked a concert in Moscow. Ah, where would they get that idea? I was like, well, why why couldn't you apply the exact who are who are we to judge? Who are we to judge? That sort of thing. 
Exactly. And, and there's, I mean, if, if it is, if it is okay in one case, or if it is justifiable in one case to commit terrorist attacks and attack uh, you know, civilians, target civilians directly and take their lives in such a brutal way, uh, why would it be so unacceptable in another case? If it is justifiable in one case, it should be justifiable in another case as well. The underlying reason behind it uh, is, of course, a different matter to discuss and then we can have our disagreements on that but if you're going to argue that under no circumstances should any any terrorist organization commit such an attack and attack uh, and and kill hundreds or more of civilians at the regular music festival then yes we should condemn that i certainly do lots of us do we condemn it we say this is barbaric this is inhuman this is sick whether it is isis doing it or hamas Unfortunately, lots of people are very spineless in this regard and can't do the same. Yeah, and I would say if you are, uh, if you can look at a at a terrorist attack anywhere else in the world, whether it's Moscow or New York or something like that, uh, London, if you look at a terrorist attack in any of those places and you say, "Ah, that's horribly evil," just attacking random people like that, horrible, awful, evil, sick, 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 but then it's an attack against Israelis and you go, well, I, I well, there it's just, it sounds like you got a problem with Jews. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. Yeah. If, in other words, if the only group that it's acceptable to do that to is just happens to be some group you hate, mm, you might, you might have, might have a problem, might have a problem. Yeah. Um, that's true. <clears throat> all right, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to, we're going to discuss this attack. We're going to discuss some insane conspiracy theories to gather the insane conspiracy theories. I just went to Twitter, went to some of our favorite Muslim accounts. We went to Daniel Hakikachu. We went to Suleiman Ahmed. We went to Dilly Dally Hussein, oh. Syrian girl. Oh, and, it's just and nothing would be complete without the Muslim cowboy. And oh. Andrew Tate. That's right, Ooh. ladies and gentlemen. We've got the full lineup of the world's leading defenders of child marriage all gathered up to share their thoughts on the Moscow attack. Uh, I'm just looking up right now because I wanted the most up to date. It was uh, 133. Yeah, that's what it was the yesterday. Death toll. The death toll was yesterday. I just looked it up. I'm on Al Jazeera, so you know it's the best possible information. <laughs> Al Jazeera says is uh, the death toll as of right now, as of, well, as of three hours ago, was 137. Search operation is still ongoing. Governor of Moscow region says amid fears the death toll of 137 may further rise. So you're still digging through uh, rubble and you may find more, uh, more bodies. So the death toll can increase like that. Or people who are injured and still in the hospital and fighting for their lives might also die. And so... I definitely would not be surprising to see this death toll rise even more. Yeah, and, yeah. And so we're going to go through, we're going to go through some uh, some comments from my Muslim friends. Uh, Syrian girl just went there instantly. Matter of fact, she was there so quickly, it's almost as if she knew it was going to happen. Mm, how could this be possible that she got there so quickly? <laughs> She might be one of the people who is behind, who are behind the attack. She might be one of the organizers of the attack. Uh, we don't know. It's possible, right? And if it's possible, then it's probable. And if it's probable, then it's certain. That's how things work on uh, Twitter, as far as I can tell. Exactly. Exactly. And the thing is also, um, <laughs> oh, I saw her earlier. She posted, she made a tweet, like so dramatic about how I am not afraid to be in Moscow, even after this terrorist attack. However, I would be afraid in Australia where I live because of the Jews. Mm -hmm. um, she, she's bragging about how she's not afraid to be in Moscow after terrorist attack. Yeah. A Syrian girl who roots for Bashar Assad uh, and is too afraid to live in Syria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, so yeah. just just to recap girl who's on the side of the russians is not scared to be in russia shocker shocker ladies and gentlemen Big all right let's, <clears throat> all right we don't want the super chats get uh, too piled up so we'll go through a couple super chats and then we will hmm who should we go to first hmm hmm and I also have uh, an article pulled up where we can actually get a lot of the details. One thing we do is we, we want everyone to walk out of here 
more informed, have more details because <clears throat> the uh, purveyors of conspiracy nonsense uh, rely a lot on ignorance. And yeah. so don't be ignorant. Yes. Uh, all right. Hey, D. Wood and AP, here's some schmeckles. AP, if I join your cult, will I be called an apist? Apist? A apist? A apist? Apist? That, that sounds very problematic. Uh, but yes, possibly. I never thought about that before, actually. Mm -hmm. but yeah, possibly. Yes. First, Russia tried to pin it on Ukraine. When ISIS took credit for it, Putin said the terrorists were trying to escape to Ukraine. Lol, we know Ukraine is connected, but how? Hashtag, yeah. Um, yeah, there's no question. There's no question. And that and that that makes total sense if you're at war in Ukraine and you're trying to rally support against Ukraine, because you gotta you do have some people who are sick of this war. Then if you really want to rally the troops, just uh, say, ah, they launched a terrorist attack against uh, harmless people at a at a concert. And that's why it came out as a theory very quickly that Putin was actually behind it. So that's one of the cons that's one of the conspiracy theories. So you've got Putin did it. It's a false flag launched by Putin in order to help him uh, consolidate his power. He just had an election uh, and to rally support against Ukraine. Then, of course, you had uh, the Ukrainians were behind it. They launched a terrorist attack. They decided, hey, we're sick of just, you know, fighting this on our on our soil. We're going to we're going to take it to them right to right to Moscow. So there's them. And then, of course, you have the usual the usual suspects. Uh, it's Mossad and Israel and so on. And then, of course, the CIA, the CIA's behind it. And uh, so those are the those are the main possible culprits in addition to isis who's been doing this for a really long time and who's claimed full responsibility for the attack but uh, they are professionals in this they have been their experience they have been doing this for a long time I, after such terrorist attacks it is easy to to be uh a russian to conclusions and putting the blame on uh different groups uh <laughs> I'm not going to say anything useful. Just wanted to do those puns. Anyway, continue. Oh boy! Wow! 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 That's what that's what we're going to have to deal with today, ladies and gentlemen. A bunch of dumb <laughs> puns. Uh, happy Palm Sunday, Hosanna in the highest, indeed. Indeed, indeed, and happy Purim to all the Jews. Yeah. I can't believe he wished happy Purim to the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> You see, this is how you see that the Jews are controlling this live stream. Did you uh, know, <laughs> did you know a snail can sleep up to three years? Yeah, but that, that scientists have discovered that's only if they're listening to Mike Winger's videos the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, nice. that was quick. That was quick. Nice. Hey, check it out. Guten Tag, my brothers. <laughs> but, but look how it's spelled Guten. Guten Tag, <laughs> mine, mine brothers. Guten Tag. Uh, David, can't wait till you take Myth Vision to the woodshed. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. He's an atheist, and as we all know, atheists are super smart and Christians are super dumb. I don't know if I'll be able to hold my own. Facts. Yeah. AP, ignoring our super chats, made me convert to Christianity. Wow. See what you're I didn't doing? Ignore any super chats. I don't know what you're talking about. You ignored the super chats for most of the show until you didn't even understand what they're about anymore. It was the perfect super chat. Here on Goat Hub, unlike D Wood and AP, we here at the best site on the web, our goats always. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lutheran James says, I was listening uh, on Audible. Uh, to an essay by the philosopher Thomas Carlyle, and he said that Islam is a twisted form of Christianity. Thoughts? Go ahead. Yeah, that, that's that's come up in the past that um, you can view Islam as a a Christian cult. So a cult is it's just it's expanded so much that it's considered a, its own separate religion. But um, yeah, so a cult is normally like an offshoot of a group that retains uh, some of the features, but uh, ends up denying the core features, and so Islam, it, it believe, Islam believes in God and uh, and prophets and scriptures and the Old Testament and the New Testament, 
and uh, Jesus and Mary believes in the Jesus, the, that Jesus is born of a virgin, that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus performed miracles, that Jesus is going to return, believes all these things, but just denies Jesus' death, resurrection, and deity. And so mm -hmm. that would fit the definition of a, of a cult pretty well. But Islam packs a lot more in there. So you can, you can think of it however you want. Any thoughts on that, AP? Yeah, uh, but pretty much the same. So it, it was the early perspective on uh, on Islam from the outside that it is a. So it was even the, the the first Christian impressions or Christian reactions were that it is a a heresy or a, a Christian heretical movement. Um, it came to be distinguished later as a separate religion. So that is a common common perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Ken was the best character in the Barbie movie AP change my mind or do you agree I no no I don't agree though okay I'll, I, I still haven't I'll seen it yet you. I still haven't I'll seen it yet see. and I probably never will unless uh, I'm forced to shame 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 is the soul a record of the human um well I, I guess if you if you view the soul as what lasts and that it retains the memories, then I guess you, that that would be a way to view it. Up oh, here we go. Finally, a comparison. D. Wood, Christian, former criminal who has a new life and is really cool. AP, atheist, wears a Barbie shirt. Draw your own conclusions. <laughs> Guys, if, if you were not convinced before, if you were not convinced before, then I don't know what else. I don't know what else it would take. Some that people just refuse. Point. Yeah, some people refuse to go where the evidence points. I'm down with team barbie i'm on team ken maximum kenergy is that a, was that a term in the thing kenergy because that sounds fun that does sound fun but i don't remember such a thing so mojo dojo casa house that's powerful stuff daesh it was us putin ukraine daesh bro <laughs> it does that's that's something that's going to suck as we're going through this that uh, one of the main ISIS is going after Russia for two reasons. One, Russia has been crushing ISIS for for many years now, so they hate them. The, Russia constantly stands in the way of what they're trying to do, and uh, but <laughs> two, they just want they just want attention, right? That's how that's how ISIS got so so much. Uh, so many uh, volunteers from around the world so quickly is they were getting all the attention by 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 attacking in every direction. People like, whoa, they're so powerful. They're able to fight against the most powerful nations in the world. Truly, Allah must be blessing them. That's how they got attention. And now they're trying to get attention. Let's get some of that attention back. Let's attack the Russians right in the heart of Moscow. That'll show the world that we're still we're still uh, we're still a huge threat and that everyone should come and join us. And then, no, it's not you. It's the CIA. <laughs> It's like, God. Yeah, the ISIS is going to sit there and be like, you know what, God, how about we just we we, we just quit because nobody believes that, that we exist anymore anyway. Everyone thinks it's the Russians or the or Ukraine or the, the Americans or the Israelis. What's even the point? Let's just quit. It's yeah, over gonna, for us. They're going to have to change. They're going to have to change their names. They're going to have to change their names. Um, they're going to have to change their names and start over because now everyone is now all the even lots of Muslims are thinking of them as like a, a front for Mossad and the CIA. And wow. the thing is, uh, lots of people come up with these conspiracy theories and repeat these conspiracy theories because um, they somehow think, oh, ISIS was gone and now they're suddenly back. Whoa, what is the We're going to see that. We're about to see that. We're about to see that from uh, from great yeah, thinkers okay. like Andrew Tate. They were never gone. They were never gone, but yeah, yeah, we can get into that lengthily. Yeah, they weren't. They aren't as big an issue as they were at the height of their power because they were taken out by Western nations and by Russia. Um, but they're still there. They broke up into a bunch of uh, a bunch of different groups. Oh, one thing also to to point out is that um, people always talk about how America um, wages war on terrorism. Um, they don't very much look at how Russia deals with terrorism. Russia mm -hmm. has been ruthless and oh, brutal yeah. in they Syria. They roll in with tanks. They roll into your town with tanks. And uh, has been bombing 
very, very much indiscriminately and massacring whatever they encounter uh, among the rebel factions and the places they hold. Um, but of course, nobody pays attention to that because pe everyone is preoccupied with how the West conducts uh, operations yeah. and what, what Israel is doing. But uh, Russia has been doing that. So it is totally expected that um, terrorists will want to respond to Russia. Yeah, and that's... Uh, we. We mentioned that briefly yesterday that uh, when you see these pictures of Syria just as a, as a pile of areas of Syria that are piles of rubble, that was Russia mm -hmm. bombing the crap out of them pretty frequently. That's Russia mm -hmm. bombing. That's Russia bombing them down to rubble. Yeah, yeah. And those are areas those see if Russia, if Russia didn't jump in to back Assad, there's a good chance that at, at the very least, ISIS would still have a big section of Syria. I, I don't know if they would have actually defeated Assad or something like that, but they would have they would still have significant territory within Syria if Russia hadn't backed Assad. So all these people, what? why would they go after Russia? It makes no sense. Yeah, if you're an idiot, it doesn't make sense. If you know nothing about the past 15 years, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Uh, the Russian Federation is sitting on top of a lot of historically Muslim land. Crimea, Chechnya, and Dagestan, Hotel. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 And guys, do, don't forget when we talk about the avalanche of apostasy and how this is uh, uh, affecting the Ummah psychologically and sending them into this, uh, this, uh, this desperate attempt that we have to do something right now because if we wait 15 more years, it's going to be too late. There's going to be too many apostates. This is all part of it. This is all part. This is all part of the motivation of ISIS and so on. Is is we have to do something right now. We have to take our stand right now. We have to start set it all off right now. And if we don't, if we just sit there and wait, then we're not going to be able to recover. It's going to be too late mm -hmm. to recover. So everything has to be now. So everyone's in a state of desperation. People in these uh, areas of Russia, these high, uh, the, these uh, uh, areas of Russia with Muslim populations, um, ISIS, various uh, groups. They're all very, very concerned that if they do not do something right now, it's going to be too late later. Iran, even in Iran and Hamas setting off this uh, this recent war with Israel, that's all part of it. It's now or never. It's now or never. Ten years from now, we'll be too late. We have to fight right now. Now, the plus side mm -hmm. of that is, the plus side of that is, if they try everything and still lose, there's no backup plan. They have no plan B here. Mm -hmm. Oh, finally, finally, I was waiting for this. AP, as someone who never knows when someone is joking, I am offended. Be more considerate, AP. Inshallah, I will try. He's got a, he's got a, very, he's got a very good point. Very good point. Russia That's faces true. a ticking demographic time bomb. Ethnic Russians are dying out while Muslims are having five to seven kids a family. That is a pretty standard issue. I don't know about the statistics in Russia and stuff, but that is the general... Uh, pattern it, when the Pew when the Pew research came out with the uh, that that study saying that Islam is the world's fastest growing religion it was because Islam has the highest birth rates and so it's just math you can take a smaller group in an area and a bigger group if the bigger group is having one to two children and the smaller group is having five six seven eight nine children it's a matter of time it's a matter of time in mathematics uh, Victoria Newland ex State Department said $60 billion will ensure Putin faces some nasty surprises on the battlefield this year. Strange, don't you think? Um, no, I don't understand. I don't understand. All right, we'll read a couple more Super Chats and then we got to jump into some stuff because we're, we'll, we'll go right to Dilly. We'll go right to Dilly. Let's, Hi, let's probably do. off topic right now, but I'm hardly ever awake when it's on topic. The word you're looking for when describing the two holes becoming one is torn perineum. This happens often during vaginal childbirth to lots of love. Yeah, and you would need you would need uh you would need lots of stitches and so on right there. Um but some guy uh Tearing his child bride in Yemen often doesn't have that ability to get good medical treatment. And so, and lots of people down through history haven't had that ability. And so it's just an ongoing problem. But why? The, our, our question is, why would you put a girl through that? Why would you want to do that to a girl, your wife? Yeah. Um, why would ISIS Mujahideen not die, not die in battle? 
well, you do have people who want to fight another day. You, you have people who are suicide bombers. You have people who want to fight and get out of there and, so they can go fight. It's like, it's like the Hamas jihadis. We love death more than they love life. What do they do? They kill a bunch of people and they run and hide. <laughs> Another super chat refers to historically Muslim land. Said land was historically Christian land before Muslim conquest. The Crusades were just. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the, by the way, that whole idea of um, uh, what was previously Muslim land or what was previously Christian land is a, is a very uh, relevant matter when, when we talk about um, something like ISIS, for example. ISIS has this map laid out, which is uh, which they published a long time ago, which is delusional, um, the provinces of the Islamic State, uh, where uh, eventually they would want to build a caliphate and, and divide it all into different provinces. And the one we're talking about today, the branch that attacked Russia was uh, Khorasan. Um, and uh, the, the idea behind those is all of these regions, all of these places, uh, at some point belonged to the Muslims, were under Muslim rule, and they shall once again be put under Muslim rule. And we will make sure of that. That is their delusional idea. And um, attacking Russia is not only in retaliation, but also in hinting at having that goal still. Um, what is the best thing to say against Israel robbed the land from Palestinians? I would go with the land wasn't controlled by Palestinians. It was controlled by the Ottoman Empire and then by the British after the Ottoman Empire fought in World War I against the Western nations, sided with Germany and lost, as everyone who sides with Germany inevitably does. And so the land was then under the control of the British to divide it up. They knew that there were a ton of uh, of the population there that wanted to wipe out Jews. And therefore, they decided to the British decided to divide up land that they controlled so that Jews would have a section of land that was under their control because you couldn't put them under the control of the Muslims who wanted to completely wipe them out and were conspiring with Hitler to do so. That's what I would say. AP. Uh, also to add to that is that um, the Jews, many of them lived there already. Many others who came later uh, bought land. So nobody actually stole or took away Palestinian land or Arab land. Uh, Palestinian referred to anyone who lives in the region prior to the establishment of Israel. Uh, much of it was either bought and therefore, then uh, it belonged to the to the Jewish population. Uh, the rest of it was controlled by the British, by the British Mandate of Palestine, which they decided to give to the Jews in this partition plan. It was only after forty seven and forty eight when the Arab side attacked the Zionists with the goal of destroying them entirely that Israel actually defeated the Arab side and then took more land. And people have interesting words for that nowadays. One of those is play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's one of them. That's one of them. Yeah. And uh, Eli here. Love you both. Praying for you and your family, AP. Thank you, Thank Eli. You. Thank you. Eli's Thank you. a cool guy. Appreciate all right, let's Appreciate last one it. here, and then we'll jump in. Yeah, we know we got more, more super chats, but we got to get to our topic. Putin's explanation that an opening was made on the Ukrainian border for the terrorists makes no sense. So Russian forces made an opening. Lol. Yeah, so you have a border. You got Russian soldiers on one side, Ukrainian soldiers on another side. Putin, in a desperate attempt to, to blame Ukraine for the terrorist attack, said, "Ah, oh, the Ukrainians were clearing a path for these guys to cross like okay well you gotta you gotta get through the russians first don't you i mean so what's going what's going on here and then the ukrainians respond is like you you think what, what what did he say he said if these guys are suicidal and want to die instantly they could cross over into ukraine <laughs> that was their response <laughs> that's a good point pretty pretty funny all right let's get into some of this stuff let's get into some stuff um, who are we going to start with? Who are we going to start with? Who did I say we start with? I said we start with Dilly. Dilly Dilly, yeah. And then I Dilly, Dilly, I ran through an alley, I jumped to the wall. Let's see. Here we go, AP. Dilly Hussein, <laughs> who do you think is behind yesterday's terrorist attack? So, no. he, he, so he started <laughs> it. The, it. <laughs> yeah, he started it. He started it the day after, but then it continued for a while. And here are the final results. So 
who do you think is behind yesterday's terrorist attack in Moscow? 42% went with the black flag of ISIS. I saw this poll uh, on the first day when it was first continuing, and it was... Uh, it was like 90%. Was... It was like 90%. <laughs> it was like 90%. Majority, yeah, Israel. it was overwhelmingly Israel, and then people... Serious people actually came and took over. That's funny. yeah, and then uh, yeah, so he ended up with over twenty thousand votes. Yeah, when it was his crowd, when it was his crowd voting, it was it was some it was some insane majority uh, saying Israel saying Israel did it, and uh, yeah, now we got the uh, now the 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 black flag of ISIS won, but only barely. But think about this: you've also got the U.S. and you got Ukraine in there. And they're di they're they're distant third and fourth, but Jews are right up there. Jews are right up there with uh, neck and neck, neck and neck, with ISIS as to who's behind it. And think, I mean, you can always point at anyone who has any sort of anything to gain by this terrorist attack. Can you say maybe the U.S.? Of course. Can you say maybe Ukraine? Sure. Can you say maybe Israel? Yeah. But to to just get like. Israel neck and neck with the group that's been doing this for a long time and has claimed responsibility and they're still neck and neck with the Jews. You guys really not realize what kind of problem you just have with Jews? <laughs> so that's that's Dilly Hussein. Any final thoughts on this AP before we move on to Syrian girl? I This is just such an embarrassing moment and I'm happy to see that to be honest because of course, the guy is like, oh, I'm going to make a poll and everyone will see that. Uh, everyone thinks it was actually the Jews. And then he makes a poll and there you have it. That's what yeah. you get. <laughs> you lost. You lost that one, Dilly. Dummy. <laughs> uh, Should have closed the poll earlier when it was still massively in favor of uh, <laughs> the Jews did it. Yeah. All right. Here we have Syrian girl. Oh, look at that. She got fact checked. Oopsie. Uh, I went to the now. Here's what here's what happened. I went to uh, her tweet here, and it said, "I went to the scene of the Moscow attack today. It was shocking to see the level of destruction, and the video doesn't do it justice." And I was like, "Why would what possible basis would there be for putting a community note on this?" The community note says, "Islamic State have claimed responsibility for the Moscow attack and released photos and live video recordings from the attackers' cell phones." Blaming Ukraine or any other organization is pure speculation. What the heck are they talking about? She just says, I went to see the Moscow attack. And I was like, oh, oh there's a video. <laughs> in the video, she'll probably be like, oh, this is clearly Ukrainian. Everything points at Ukraine and so on, right? Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into, let's go ahead and jump into the, matter of fact, she posted a video right before that. That's not the video that was there. We'll go ahead and watch uh, three of the video clips she posted on location because she is a super serious journalist, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What are you laughing at? This is she Syrian is girl. such an annoying, terrible person. It's, she it's... has a huge following, dude. Who, who are you gonna? How are you gonna argue with that? She's like one of the biggest liars that you can encounter on social. She media. has a huge following. How do you explain that? If she's, she's such a liar, she's literally the worst. How, the worst. how could she be the worst when she has a huge following? Terrible, absolutely terrible. All right, here we go, Syrian girl, ladies and gentlemen. Hi everyone, it's Syrian Girl and I'm in Moscow right now, um, just after the terrorist attack. I can tell you that most people are doubting that this is ISIS. Most people, including the government, likely are suspecting that this is Ukrainian terrorists. This is not the first time that a terrorist attack happened in Moscow. Of course, there was the assassination of Daria Dugina with a car bomb uh, right here. Uh, there were there were multiple other attempts at the attack. Notice her reasoning is no, there's no evidence, right? There's no, here's the evidence that it's Ukraine. It's most people here and even the government are thinking that it's not ISIS, it's Ukraine. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's what most people are thinking there, uh, according, <laughs> according to Syrian girl, um, because the, the, the Russian government, they're not biased against Ukraine. And Syrian girl certainly isn't biased uh, in favor of Russia here. So no. yeah, we, we just gotta, we gotta, we gotta trust what she says here. here we go. Um, there is heightened security here. Although I think it became uh, a little bit too relaxed over time. 
You think? Um, and now that's not going to be the case anymore. Uh, but, you know, the what's that sound like, AP? Security got too lax, giving terrorists the opportunity to come and slaughter a bunch of people. And now you'll have to ramp back up security uh, because things weren't as laid back as you thought they were. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds an awful lot like exactly what happened in Israel. And probably it, you're probably going to see more of this, ladies and gentlemen, because, uh, you know, when when ISIS was a super big thing years ago, then everyone is on on high alert constantly when ISIS, the, the, the main, the main group started collapsing, then, Oh, we're okay now. And we all lull ourselves to sleep so that even when people are attacking, we don't, we don't believe it can't, can't be happening. Can't be happening. She, she is such a vile liar. She, what? she was following me, uh, until very, very recently. Um, and Actually, she was following me until I temporarily blocked her at some point because I couldn't, because uh, I was extremely angry at, at something that she that she tweeted where she called the sexually abused and killed Israeli civilians at the music festival uh, disease infested hags. Why would anyone want to rape them anyway, or something like that? And I thought, wow, I, I'm. I can't control myself. I'm going to say something really, really, really bad. So I just, I just thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to block her for now. So later, I unblocked her to interact once again. But she has been um, commenting on my stuff, and she is just such a liar. She gets fact checked. Uh, she is shown evidence of stuff that she says there is no evidence for. Then she just makes up excuses and moves on without acknowledging it. She is a pure propagandist. To most people who are aware of her suspect um just works on behalf of the syrian government and the russian government and uh, what i find it interesting is you have the people on twitter like her and it's mm -hmm. just oh it's it's i mean come on come on we all know we all know that this is ukraine it's so obvious that it's ukraine come on ukraine we know it's ukraine you go to another muslim channel come on we know this is the cia we know it's the cia we know that that ISIS is a front for the CIA. And so you go to another Muslim, come on, it's obviously Israel. Israel's behind this. Israel's, they're the ones who stand most. They're all like, they have all, they all think it's obvious that whoever they dislike the most is is responsible for anything that happens anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I have to say the the biggest culprits based on the channels that I went to were, were, were massively, massively overwhelmingly in favor of uh, Jews being behind this ISIS attack it's always jews the jews, jews did the, jews. the big thing my girlfriend left me it was the jews i can't find my socks it was I, the jews i stubbed my toe it was the jews the fact that isis supposedly just posted on this website that they were responsible does not equal that they were responsible and we all know, like, why suddenly this can... The fact that ISIS... That's, keep in mind, she's technically correct. Someone can claim responsibility for something they didn't do. In fact, that happened after the Anders Breivik attack. Um, Anders, th there was the attack. As it's going on, a group, I think it was a group in Syria, claimed responsibility, a terrorist group in Syria. This is before ISIS, but they claimed responsibility. And... Um, after they claimed responsibility, I said, hey, this, look, look, uh, this group says they did it, blah, 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 blah. And then it turned out they didn't do it. It was Anders Breivik. And then for years to come, Muslims left out the fact that a group claimed responsibility. And I said, hey, and they said, oh, this is the guy who blamed Muslims for the Anders Breivik attack. OK, I'm sorry. I didn't automatically assume that people, uh, Muslims taking credit for something, are liars. I'm, I apologize for not automatically concluding these guys are liars. But I'm told if I assume they're lying, then I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an Islamophobe. So I don't know. I don't know what to do in these situations. But she's right. She's right that just because ISIS says they did it doesn't mean that they did it. But <laughs> when the guys are, when ISIS is the one that's releasing the uh, the body cam footage of these guys and so on. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> so, so think about this ISIS. We've got, uh, we got the MO of ISIS. They like to attack large concert gatherings because, uh, and in, in big areas. So they, they like it in, in big areas of, uh, you know, UK or, or France or whatever. They like these big attacks and they like the attacks to be in areas where you're not going to be hitting Muslims. So concert or something like that. 
Ariana Grande concert. If you if you want to impress ISIS, then then uh, attack an Ariana Grande concert or something like that. So they like attacking these kinds of places. Then it happens against Russia, who's been crushing ISIS for a long time. And then ISIS comes out and says, yeah, we did it. They start releasing the footage and stuff like that of the attack. And her response is, well, you know, but here on the ground, we know it's Ukraine. (laughs) Yeah. And that's what we're dealing with on social media, guys. That's what we're dealing with. People, oh, she got a great point. That's right. Why? Just because they say they did it doesn't mean they did it. That's true. That's true. Oh my Convenient gosh. time. There's a resurgence of ISIS. You know, how many years has it been since there was an ISIS? And why is it that? Uh, pretty sure, as somebody who is who follows the conflict in Syria, she should be aware that ISIS has been active without without interruption since ISIS came into existence. They have been active without interruption. They still control territory in Syria. They still control territory uh, in different countries, including in Yemen, for example, uh, in places in North Africa, in other places. uh, And they still carry out international terrorist attacks. The only reason why people kind of have this false impression that ISIS is gone is that at some point they established the state which actually became a big challenge uh but it was crushed so it is no longer that big uh which is why people think okay isis is gone but isis is not gone it's just their strength has been crushed but they are still active yeah and they have sort of local groups but uh then it's along the lines of the local of the local group so you have boko haram and then you have the isis version you you also have the an isis group there in northern africa you have uh, isis active in places notice they're not in control of afghanistan they're fighting they want control of afghanistan but you have isis in afghanistan you have a uh, you you still have isis attack you still have you have isis in pakistan they're active they're just not this big global threat, so we don't hear much about them. Why? Because Western nations don't pay attention to terrorist attacks in Nigeria. It's one of our ongoing complaints on This Week in Jihad is every week we can report on multiple terrorist attacks in Nigeria. No one ever hears about them. Oh, I guess, I, I guess Boko Haram went away because we're not hearing about it. We haven't heard about Boko Haram <laughs> since all those, gir- since all those uh, girls were kidnapped uh, ten year- a decade or so ago. Right. We haven't heard about them since then. So I guess they went around. No, media just aren't really reporting on it. It's they've Boko Haram has been relentlessly attacking, as has ISIS. They're just not this big thing that's con- that's a, that's that's becoming a threat to Western nations. When do we finally hear about them again? When they're doing something in Afghanistan? No. When they're doing something in Moscow, that's when everyone pays attention. But this super genius here. Oh, it's not reported a lot. Therefore, they haven't existed for a while. And now they just, oh, they just, well, oh, they just came back by magic. No. The media, this is what the I mean. media, the media reported it by magic, finally. And this is what I mean. Uh, she's not ignorant. She's not, she, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't actually think that ISIS was gone. She knows that ISIS has been active. Th- th- this is the problem with her. Uh, she's not just somebody who is ignorant. She's actually pretty sure she's lying. She is just using dishonesty, deception. That would be pretty shocking. Let's see. Maybe she's going to redeem herself here. While there's a genocide going on in Palestine, ISIS (laughs) never attacks Israel. And the one time that a wayward missile went in their direction, the Israeli defense minister said that ISIS apologized to them. Why is it that this ISIS creature is always attacking the countries that, that the U.S. is fighting at that time? For example, you know, during the Syrian war. What? That, that is false. There were uh, several attacks on Israel and Israeli forces in the past, including uh, two inside Israel. Uh, ISIS just hasn't managed to commit big, great terrorist attacks inside Israel because committing terrorist attacks as outsiders inside Israel is very, very difficult. Uh Uh, And as terrorist groups within Israel is relatively easier, which is the problem. But you know very well, David, as well, from uh, as somebody who got into Israel, that getting into Israel is not a walk in the park, which is why ISIS has 
the big difficulties operating there. Yeah, so you have to get in there, and getting in there is really, really, really hard. Um, Gladly so. Yeah, and besides that, Israel just isn't their target. Like Muslims, uh, a, a bunch of the Muslims that we're going to be uh, looking at in their tweets and so on, they can't get their mind around a Muslim group being obsessed with anything other than Israel. That is, that's just, ISIS actually has a different view, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to come up uh, for people who come in later. I'll probably end up repeating this multiple times as we're going through these tweets. ISIS has a different view. So you take a group like Hamas and lots of the Muslims who support them. The view is, oh, just keep attacking Israel and we'll eventually conquer it, right? ISIS's view is they're looking around and they're like, wait a minute, we lost our caliphate after World War I. We lost our caliphate. Then we've been losing and losing and losing and losing. And then we're, uh, we're, we, 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 we've got this little nation, Israel, here. And we keep attacking, keep attacking, keep it. We can't win anything. All these other nations are more powerful than us. What is going wrong here? Why did we lose our caliphate? Why are we so weak right now? And one possible explanation for that is, well, Islam just isn't true and Allah doesn't have your back. That's a possible explanation. Uh, ISIS doesn't want to go there, so they have to explain it some other way. And it's the same general thinking that we saw with the Iranian revolution and the rise of the Muslim Brotherhood. You have groups that said the reason our, the reason Islam is weak and collapsing and other nations are more powerful is because Allah is not blessing us because we have compromised too much. We are not enforcing Islamic law strictly enough. Allah, why would Allah bless us to win when we don't even we don't even take care of our own community? That's the reasoning. So step one for ISIS, and there's a reason the there's a reason the uh, first uh, new caliph Abu Bakr al Baghdadi took the name Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, the Abu Bakr of Baghdad, that there's a reason he took that as his name. When Muhammad died, when Muhammad died, a bunch of Muslims thought they don't have to, they don't have to follow the, the central Islamic leadership anymore. We don't have to. So people said, hey, we can pay zakat how we want. We're still going to pay zakat. We're just going to pay it how we want. I'll just go give it to some, I'll just go give it to a poor person or something like that. I don't have to, I'm not going to give it to the government to do anything. I don't, I don't trust you guys. That's when Abu Bakr said, if you, if famous quote, he said, if you refuse to give me a piece of rope that you would have given Muhammad, I'm coming to kill you. Meaning, mm -hmm. if you do not do exactly what the caliph says you do, you are, I'm treating you as an apostate and I will kill you. You're mm -hmm. an apostate unless you obey your caliph. So what happens? Abu Bakr fights the apostate wars. He goes out and fights everyone who rebels against him in any way crushes all of them. And right after he does that, right after Abu Bakr crushes these guys, crushes all heresy, rebellion, apostasy, right after he crushes them, you get this huge, massive period of, of Islamic expansion. That's where Islam keeps growing. It spreads across Northern Africa. It spreads all the way out to, to, to India. It spreads up into Europe. They get this crazy period of growth. ISIS looks at that and says, notice what they did. They purified the community first so that it would be a community that Allah would bless to then go out and conquer. What do we do now? We sit around uh, comfortable with Shias and everything around us and, and heresy. We're not enforcing Sharia. And we wonder why Allah is not blessing us to, to finish the job. So what is their task? Their task is to get rid of all heresy, apostasy, rebellion, all that, and strictly enforce Sharia. And they will kill and slaughter anyone who gets in their way, just like Abu Bakr did. That's their goal. They're not focused on Israel. Is not be according to ISIS, if we just if, if we just keep attacking Israel and we're not purifying our own community, we're gonna lose. We're gonna lose. Allah's not gonna bless us. They will beat us forever if we do things the way we've been doing them. So they focus on other things. Now, you may be asking why they attack Russia. What does ISIS do? They, they are trying to cleanse the ummah of all impurity, heresy, apostasy, and so on. They fight against all of that and anyone who interferes with that, anyone who, in, anyone who takes the side of the groups they're going against. Well, who takes the side of the groups they're fighting? Russia. Russia takes the side of Assad. Russia takes the side of Iran. Russia, Russia is protecting all these groups. They can't beat Israel or the United States or anyone else. In their minds, they can't win. There's it, winning is hopeless, according to ISIS. Winning again, taking over the world is absolutely hopeless until they have purified the Islamic community first. 
And in order to purify the Islamic community, they have to deal with Russia because Russia's Russia's protecting all the groups they want to cleanse the community of. That's what's going you know on what's, here. You know what's kind of messed up? Um, I want to say, but it, it is probably accurate to point out that uh, the majority of um, those Muslims and Islamists and conspiracy theorists who say, oh, if you are, it's very, very clear that ISIS are not Muslims. They are controlled by a different force because why are they attacking Muslims so much? Why are they not attacking Israel? Those people are short-sighted and haven't thought about it remotely as much as the ISIS leadership thought about it. So the ISIS leadership is thinking far ahead and is thinking far more, uh, is 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 playing the long game and mm -hmm. is much more far sighted than uh, these these people who bring that objection. So that that is a very important and very good point to bring up and to talk about um, that people don't understand. More people, yeah. more, more people should understand that in ISIS's uh, view, from their perspective, if they continued attacking Israel, it would just it would lead to nothing except yeah. more suffering. If they, however, uh, attack the weaker Muslim nations and Muslim groups surrounding them, they have chances to actually defeat and overthrow them and uh, swallow them and add to their own strength, after which they can, if they establish a great caliphate, then they can go after all those forces that these Muslims are, or these these other Islamists are in vain trying to fight. The first goal is to go after those other supposed Muslims, which is also why they have had this view forever now um, that those Muslims who don't pledge allegiance to the Islamic State are enemies and mm -hmm. may be attacked and may be killed because uh, they may be outright disbelievers and if even if they are not outright disbelievers they are uh, they are an obstacle to the greater goal of Islam which is why killing them is justified this is their reasoning and uh, this reasoning goes back to to people like uh, I don't know uh, Sayyid Qutb and it's different different um, people who have kind of shaped these jihadist ideas plus there's also one other thing to point out which is that the caliphate when it was abolished was not abolished by non-muslims by westerners it was <laughs> abolished when it was in the hands of other muslims isis is aware of that so they have to first establish islam once more yeah guys so get this get this general idea down isis believes it's you're you're it's basically a hopeless endeavor to go around thinking you're going to conquer the world until you have purified and cleansed the muslim community of all these different heretical muslim groups and all these non-sharia compliant muslims you have to deal with that problem first only then will allah bless you to carry out your mm -hmm. task of conquering the world and so what do they do they go after the groups that they regard as heretical. They go after non-Sharia compliant Muslims. They go after Muslims who are following Sharia, but just don't submit to the caliph that they're supposed to submit to. Submit to. That's who they focus on. And anyone who is protecting those groups and individuals, namely Russia. Now, here's the thing, guys, think about this, because all the Muslims are about to look at, they don't seem to get this idea. Is Israel protecting all these groups that uh, that uh, ISIS wants to do away with. In other words, one of the main uh, one of the main obstacles for ISIS would be Iran. Is Israel protecting Iran? No, Israel Israel can't stand Iran, so it's not siding with Iran and protecting Iran. Who's protecting Iran? Russia. Uh, who else? Who else is uh, who else is a big obstacle to ISIS? Assad. Is Israel supporting Assad? Is Israel protecting and defending Assad? No, they're enemies. Who's supporting Assad? Russia. And everyone, why aren't they going for? Why aren't they going after Israel? Israel has some of the same enemies, right? Because <laughs> it's for completely different reasons. Namely, Iran is an enemy of Israel because Iran wants to wipe Israel off the map. But Iran is also Shia and therefore an enemy of ISIS. And so Iran hates both for completely different reasons, but then both do not like Iran. 
And so you're, you're over and over again, why isn't ISIS attacking Israel? And Israel has nothing to do with anything ISIS is focusing on right now. Nothing. Zero. They do not care about that. They care about one thing. And that's what they're focused on. People are going, oh, ISIS is focused on this one thing. Why aren't they focused on this other thing that has nothing to do with that? Gee, I wonder. It's so hard to figure out. Yep. Gosh, 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 gosh. All right, back to Syrian girl. By the way, how's she, uh, how's she uh, talking trash about those, uh, those uh, girls at the concert and stuff if she looks exactly like someone who would have been at that concert? I want to say more about that, but I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> All right. We were fought by ISIS uh, to the point of devastation. And at the same time as ISIS was bombing us, the U.S. was bombing us. Isn't that strangely convenient? And the fact that during the Iraq war, where ISIS was born out of Al-Qaeda, you know, isn't it strange Gee, that where the U.S. is fighting, ISIS is just happens to be fighting the people that they're fighting? I mean, Ooh, like, doesn't that strike anyone happens. as odd? Doesn't it strike anyone as odd that just after, you know, Russia uh, vetoed a, UN resol- a pro-Israel UN resolution, like within hours or within minutes, this attack happens? Uh, the fact that, you know, Russia only a few weeks ago had all of the policy. Guys, by the way, this is how conspiracy theories work. You just point out a bunch of stuff that ignores that. OK, group that constantly does this, <laughs> then says they did it. What's a, But what about this? And what about that? Isn't it strange that this just happened? Yeah, you could do that with anything. If you wanted to blame Japan for this attack, isn't it strange that a, a, an ambassador from Japan just visited Moscow right before this attack? Why do you think that was? Oh, was it to... You could blame anything using this method. There are also oh, two God. things that she brings up, which, um, what was it? The first one, um, I, I, I don't remember the first thing that she brought up, which was kind of, which was wrong. But the second one is that this happened just after, uh, just after Russia and China vetoed the resolution. The resolution was about a, a, um, a it was a ceasefire resolution. It was not something that, uh, that Israel is particularly excited about. So, and that, that they are just feeling um, pressured to kind of go for. So the fact that somebody blocks this resolution is not something that Israel is actually angry about or that they would be angry about. On the contrary, they would probably think, oh God, God, it didn't work out. So it would be very, it's very, it's a very strange uh, theory that that I that Israel would be so angry about this that they would send terrorists over there. It's yeah, just, it's, guys, it's, well, there was this, that, that was going on. You know what we'll do? We'll get a bunch of jihadis to go in there to, to attack a concert and say that they're ISIS. That's our plan. That's how we do things. Oh boy! And then her, so her theory is uh, ISIS is uh, is uh, yeah, U.S. and Israel and everyone else is uh, actually behind ISIS. And isn't it a coincidence that they have some of the same enemies? Yeah. Uh, guess what? We uh, U.S. and Western nations are what crushed ISIS in Iraq. Russia crushed ISIS in Syria. Different groups are fighting ISIS in different ways. If ISIS is actually just like puppets of the U.S. So then she'd have to say, oh, yes, U.S. is destroying them. But just to keep up appearances, the so U.S. builds this great, this awesome terrorist network to take over massive uh, plots of land and then goes in and fights them. To Also, ISIS was bought, was uh, carrying out terrorist attacks uh, throughout Europe and the West for years, for many years, when the West was actively participating in uh, destroying and fighting ISIS. So... If, if you just want to apply these, if you just want to ask these questions, yeah, well, don't you see, don't you see that uh, that uh, ISIS was, was uh, carrying out terrorist attacks in the UK, in France, in America, in Canada, in Germany, here and there, exactly when the West was, when these countries were engaged in fighting ISIS. Is this a coincidence? Yeah, see. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, you've seen Samson versus 1000 Philistines clip on YouTube. Uh, no, is that one of those videos where it'll be like uh, five Jedi versus 10,000 droids and they just, uh, I guess, uh, do some sort of AI battle or something like that? I've seen I've seen a couple of those. Or it'll be like a uh, uh, 100 Spartans versus and they'll actually program it with the features of uh, various groups to see how they would actually fight. I don't know. No, I haven't seen that. 
Uh, here's one for you, AP. The Quran goes so hard, I still listen to it, even as an apostate. Can Ridvan relate? Uh, no. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes I do. Uh, I do find myself um, reciting it in fancy in work, ways. In worship because it's fun no mm -hmm. <laughs> but reciting it in fancy ways because it's fun uh but that's that's all i do mm -hmm. uh who's the second most obvious false prophet though well, we have different views on this you don't even you, you don't even think that muhammad is the most obvious false prophet in history you no i don't yeah i would say joseph smith number two no no offense mormons but yeah joseph smith <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Joseph Smith was significantly more obvious than Muhammad. I don't. We're going we're gonna to actually have to lay out our case. I'm thinking in terms of the number of different ways that you're proven to be a false prophet. Let's arrange a debate, a modern day debate about this. We're going to have to. We're gonna have to. I'll, I'll destroy you. Uh, John says, I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. Come on, AP. Let's go potty. Come on, AP. Huh. Let's go potty. <laughs> potty. Potty. That's what I say sometimes at home. Uh, thoughts, on, thoughts on thoughts on Elon Musk and Neuralink and Mind Cursor. I don't know. I have to I have to see how people turn out once they start plugging them into the computers. I want to become a test object as soon as uh, I want to get one as soon as it's available. I am very much into that. Yeah, I'm gonna let them work out some of the bugs before they plug one of those things into my head. People are too paranoid. I'm I'm like, hey, this is great. When why is it not here already? Why don't I have all these different capabilities in my eyes and my head? I want to be connected to the internet at all times, twenty four seven. Yeah, ha Hamas knows death tolls in five minutes. Russia is unprofessional. I know, right? Like uh, something could get bombed, and uh, Hamas knows exactly how many people, and that they're all children and all civilians yeah. every time it happens, yeah. instantly. Uh, yeah, the Hamas, uh, the Gaza Health Ministry is very professional. The, as soon as a bomb explodes, they're like, "Okay, so many children just died." Like, they know exactly. Um, check out the response done by a German YouTuber. That's not something perverted, is it, AP? No, no. Okay, because uh, Goethe Fachter looks like something else. <laughs> Dawa. That does look weird. <laughs> it looks like something you'd see on uh on Only Goats. Uh yeah, yeah. Dawa. Yeah. It's awful how proud they can be over such horror. Terrible, terrible. Uh let's see. Is Daniel Hakikachu really Osama Abdullah come back to defend Islam? No. Uh Osama Abdullah would say I mean they look the same. But, yeah, Osama Abdullah would deny everything and call us liars over everything. Whereas Daniel Hakikachu just says, yes, it's all true. And it's great because everyone like this has ever, everyone who's ever existed has been exactly the same. <laughs> and I can lie really, I can lie. I can make up new lies faster than you can expose my old lies. So I win. <clears throat> AP, mature, reasoned, respectful. D. Wood, like a three-year-old with a pointy stick in a balloon store. You're supposed to draw say draw. Yeah, you're supposed to say draw your own conclusions. Finally, yeah. we got apostate Allah Deen. Please be considerate. What if a Muslim sees this Barbie shirt on a grown man? They'd consider it idolatry, and it'd hurt their feelings. <laughs> Shameful. <laughs> idolatry. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, hey, messianic apostate here says, "Did you see my thread where I debunked the myth that Daesh apologized to Israel? Conspiracy theorists are driving me." To defend Daesh, isn't that funny? You have to like, no, actually, in defense, in defense of ISIS, let me say they didn't apologize. That's a false accusation by critics. <laughs> it's it's getting so ridiculous. I find oh, myself wow. spending spending too much time responding to these uh, conspiracy theorists on on social media that just say the most absurd things, and I don't, I don't even know. Like, I'm thinking, I'm just wasting too much time at this point. <laughs> Yep. I don't know. Uh, 15 year old boy saved hundreds, uh, 100 people in attack. Uh, he's Muslim. Yeah, I think his name is Islam. Uh, so he uh, he actually he, he 
he saw or heard the gunfire and he started uh, telling people, you know, get out of there and how to get out of the building and stuff like that. And so uh, he's, he's they're going to give that kid some sort of medal or something like that. But I mean, think about that. Like you could have a perspective that these people, here's what sucks. It's very easy to just wait 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 wait, 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 wait. It was a Muslim named Islam who knew what was going on and he helped people get out so he knew exactly what was going on and where to oh huh. my goodness how could he have known how could he have known what was going on when no one else knew <laughs> if you want to be a conspiracy theorist there you go <laughs> yeah um so Sorry, here's the you. thing you know f you can you could be a you know 15 year old muslim who doesn't hate everyone and doesn't want to kill anyone and so on and say hey i mean these guys are attacking just random people here um so you could be like that. But the point is the perspective of ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Al-Shabaab and Boko Haram and all these groups. If you're an ISIS jihadi, do you believe you're completely justified even in attacking random people at a concert hall? Absolutely. Why? Why? Well, Islam has a rule. It comes from the Quran. That if you are making mischief, if you are committing the vague crime of making mischief in a land, waging war against Allah, how do you wage war against Allah? By opposing Sharia and causing problems in Muslim lands and so on. Did Russia do that? That's a death penalty in Islam. Did Russia do that from an Islamic perspective, from the perspective of ISIS? Absolutely, they've been doing it. Look what they've been doing. They've been, they've been, bombing, they've been bombing Muslims, right? So are they guilty of that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Also, yeah. accord, so that's according to the Quran, according to Muhammad, the person who funds a soldier who's fighting gets an equal reward to the soldier who actually does the fighting. In other words, if, if from the from the Islamic, I mean, from the perspective of Islamic soldiers, if I'm a wealthy guy and I pay for a soldier to have armor and weapons and so on to go out and fight, I get a reward equal to him when he goes out and fight. I get I get I get half the reward. But the same applies to the people who are making mischief in Muslim lands. There's the people who are actually there's the soldier who actually drops the bomb on ISIS, but then there are the people who are funding that. There are the people who are paying for the soldier. They're paying for the plane. They're paying for the bomb. Who Who's doing that? Your average Russian taxpayer. That's who's doing it. Yeah. It was the same reasoning as Al-Qaeda when they had to justify uh, uh, attacking the World Trade Center. So it's the exact same reasoning. It's who is responsible for this happening? Regular people who are paying their taxes to governments who are making mischief in Muslim lands. It's very, very easy to justify going in there and committing mass murder from an Islamic perspective. <clears throat> Fortunately, I'm, I'm glad this uh, 15, I'm, I, I mean, I've only seen it in some tweets. I assume it's true. Uh, glad this uh, young Muslim did help people, but it, it's, it's pretty indisputable that this sort of thing would be justified according to the Quran and the Hadith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, let's see a little more from Syrian girl here. No, uh, wait, what? One of the people who is also responsible for terrorist attacks uh, across the world, uh, especially if, uh, or no, one of the people who is responsible for American actions against uh, Muslims around the world is also Daniel Gikicu because he is a taxpayer in America, for example. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ouch. Continue. Well, we don't know he pays his taxes, do we? <clears throat> That's true. That's true. Maybe he just uh, refuses and lives <laughs> off of state benefits. Wouldn't, wouldn't be surprising including Possibly. Hamas. Um, doesn't it strike anyone as odd is that ISIS would choose to target the country that brought them in and try to support them? You know, isn't it the case that Israel is... ISIS and Hamas hate each other, just so everyone knows. ...destroying mosque after mosque and threatening to take the <coughs> Al-Aqsa Mosque, the most holy mosque in Islam, and turn it into a synagogue uh, and build but the third temple. You know, isn't it... Yeah, she's saying... Uh, Did she just say Al-Aqsa, yeah. the most holy mosque in Islam? Is that what she said? Let's see. The country that brought them in and tried to support them. You know, isn't it the case that Israel is destroying mosque after mosque and threatening to take the Al-Aqsa mosque, the most holy mosque in Islam, Whoa. and turn it into a synagogue? You heard it here, folks. <laughs> the Al-Aqsa mosque is the... <laughs> 
is the most holy <laughs> mosque in Islam, according to Syrian girl. Guys, somebody but needs to no clip Muslim that. is aware of that. No Muslim knows about that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, so Israel's trying to steal the Al Aqsa Mosque, and uh, ISIS just isn't focusing on them. On Israel trying to take the most holy <laughs> mosque in Islam. Wow! 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 Syrian girl. That's weird. That's weird. I went there and it was totally empty. Imagine, imagine the holiest, the holiest mosque in all of Islam. And the whole place is just totally empty. And build the third temple. You know, isn't it odd that at that time when this is happening, ISIS is still just attacking the enemies of the United States? I mean, come on. I mean, how much more obvious can you get that ISIS is the CIA in the Mossad? Or... <laughs> CIA... <laughs> How much more obvious can you get? That ISIS <laughs> is just the CIA and Mossad. That was a huge, huge jump. It was the perfect happen. jump. How did that happen? How do you get from that to that? It's like, wow, man. Well, isn't it true that at this time this person went over there? Isn't it true that that person went over there? Isn't it true that while this this was happening, that and that was happening? Therefore, that person is the president of the United States. Yes. Okay. All right. That's how that's how the conspiracy theories work, ladies and gentlemen. That's why people love her. You just saw it. Isn't it amazing? ISIS just attacked Russia, an enemy of the United States. Why would they attack the enemy of the United States unless oh, it's actually the United States? And so, what, so but, but keep in mind. She started this off by saying people here don't believe that ISIS is responsible for this. They believe that this is a Ukrainian attack. This is Ukraine. So Ukraine actually did the attacking. ISIS wouldn't attack because, wait a minute, ISIS is the CIA and Mossad. Why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they attack if it was ISIS? If that, I don't know. I can't even figure it out now. So it was actually Ukraine that did the attacking, but ISIS is CIA and Mossad. So Makes no... Sense. Islam just has nothing to do with any of this uh, ISIS attack, ladies and gentlemen. Islam has nothing to do with Islam. <clears throat> this is this is a uh, wow, 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 wow. This is this is uh, this is Dawa right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is the state wow, of Dawa wow, wow. address. The the actors that did this, in fact, were actors... not like ISIS, but in fact were uh, you know probably uh traitors working for uh, ukrainians working for the americans okay so, so it's ukrainian uh, don't don't leave out Mossad. they're ukrainians they're not isis the the guys carrying out the attack screaming allahu akbar while slaughtering people and like i don't know if you guys we're not we're not going to look at the actual video footage here ladies and gentlemen because uh, i'm pretty sure that would cause some problems with uh with youtube but uh, I mean, the guys were just like like slicing away at throats and stuff of people who were on the ground and stuff like that, and blood splattering everywhere. And these guys are, uh, hello, Akbar, hello, Akbar. Um, but yeah, they are uh, they're just Ukrainians, Ukrainians uh, paid by the United States and Mossad. P gosh, <laughs> poor ISIS, poor ISIS can no longer do a terrorist attack because they're going to uh, U.S. Mossad and Ukraine are going to get blamed for everything they do from now on. It's so funny that um, I, I saw people just move the goalposts and move from one speculation to the other after, you know, they, they go to one speculation, it is debunked, and they're like, oh, then move, okay, then this is the, then, the, then it's this, and then it's debunked, then, oh, no, then, the, then it's this. It's like, at first they were saying, look at this, these guys don't even look like uh, Muslims, therefore they must be uh, Ukrainians or even Israelis. <laughs> then it turns out that they, that they are indeed uh, Muslims, that they are indeed actual Muslims with Muslim backgrounds, and that they are... Uh, from Tajikistan and other origins, then it's like, well, okay, well, uh, well, they were probably just people who were hired to carry out this attack by Israel and Ukraine and this and that. So th th that's just how it is. They, they don't rely on any piece of evidence. They just rely on uh, their speculations and go with whatever has not been fully debunked, according to them. Mm -hmm. And here you go. 
Not the first terror attack by Ukraine. See these other ones? They recruited these guys via telegram as every time before. Actually, the guy said they were listening to Islamic preachers who recruited them on telegram. Uh, but these had to be Ukrainian uh, imposters who were imitating ISIS preachers. So you had Ukrainians pretending to be ISIS preachers, <laughs> getting guys to follow them on Telegram, and then telling them to go uh, launch a terrorist attack. And then they fled to Ukraine. Did they flee to Ukraine? How did, how did the Russians get them? <laughs> how did Do you the see how professional, how good Ukrainians are? I didn't know that Ukrainians are such, are so amazing, are so They're powerful. Such geniuses. Very Ooh. powerful. They're tactical geniuses. Yeah. Wow. And guys, this is the issue with conspiracy theories, right? So you'll take something that happens, whatever it is, moon landing, whatever else. And the conspiracy theorists will say, oh, but look at this thing. Look at the shadow of the ship on the ground. You see? Therefore, this huge conspiracy, right? Guys, the huge conspiracy theory can't be, uh, can't have more problems than what you're, what it is you're trying to explain, right? And so, okay, ISIS attacks concerts for years. Then a concert gets attacked against, it's an attack against Russia, who's been crushing ISIS for years. They see the perfect opportunity to launch an attack against Russia. Why? Because Russia is really, really occupied with Ukraine right now. Perfect opportunity to go in there and... Your response is, ah, must be uh, Ukrainian uh, Ukrainians pretending to be Islamic preachers recruiting people on Telegram. And then these guys were fleeing to Ukraine. Why? Because Putin said they were. And it's all, uh, it's all, it, see, it's obvious. Wow. It's also not like something, it's, it's not like they give uh, these tasks to random people who are like, who are signing up on Telegram and who are like, hey, I want to carry out a terrorist attack. Uh, can you get me a mission? And they're like, okay, okay, just stand by. And then at some point when they need someone, they're like, hey, do you, do you go and carry out this attack? No, <laughs> that's, that's not how it happens. They, they are in touch with these guys for very, very long amounts of time to check their, to to see if they are up to the task, to see their loyalty, to see their understanding, to see if they are serious, to assess all kinds of different things. It's, it's not like it's not like oh, you know, Ukraine just needs a terrorist attack right now. Uh, do you have anyone there? Oh yeah, yeah, we have somebody right here who wants to make some money. Okay, give them so much money and let them carry out the terrorist attack. That's not how it works, man. People mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But that is an ongoing that is an ongoing problem. Uh, guys, especially as, as we've talked about in the past, that uh, as people join different groups and then become increasingly more polarized, you don't trust anything. It, it's it's cult. Once you've once everyone is part of some group that is set against every other group, then cult tactics within the group take over. You don't listen to anything except what theory you're supposed to maintain, which usually involves your enemies being behind everything bad. And you can't listen when your enemies respond. They're your enemies. You don't trust them. You only listen to what your group is saying. And that is some danger. And you're get, so you're going to see a lot more of this, ladies and gentlemen, because messed up things are going to keep happening in the world. And if Jews are your main enemy, guess what? Jews are behind everything. If the uh, U.S. is behind, if the U.S. is your main enemy, then the CIA is behind it. If uh, you're on the Russian side, well, Ukraine did it. If you're on the Ukrainian side, the Russians did it. Uh, yeah, that's just going to be happening over and over and over again. So get used to it. Uh do you think Putin is popular or Russian elections are rigged? Well, it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if the elections are rigged. And since there is pretty uh, tight control over things there, I would say he's probably not as popular as certain information would indicate. But AP, you would say he's still pretty popular there, right? <clears throat> he, he is still, I would say he is still, uh, given the the polls and other things he is still quite popular um russians are very are very proud people and despite people despite a lot of russians being very very uh disheartened and very disappointed with uh, how things have been going under putin there is a lot of um putin plays a lot toward people's emotions and the fact that since the uh, invasion of Ukraine, uh, the West has kind of shut Russia off um, hasn't really helped 
win Russian people over and, you know, draw them away from Putin. It has kind of, um, it has given Putin a lot of uh, propaganda material to say, look, they don't care about us. They don't care about our people. They don't care about Russia. Uh, we are dispensable for them and so on. Um, so th th these narratives exist. And for various reasons, I would say he, he is definitely still popular. The, the majority of Russians support Putin. There are some people who are who dislike him, who are against him, who want him to go. Um, but they are they are a small minority. And uh, yeah, there's a when <clears throat> when Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, I'm on the U, I was on team Ukraine, not because I have any special love for Ukraine. I mean, I kind of think of them as in my mind, it's like similar. I think of them like Russians. It's just, I do not trust Russia when Russia wants to expand, right? Um, it would be the same thing if China started attacking someone be like, eh, these are one of the groups that actually wants to become uh, the next uh, superpower as the United States weakens. And so always suspicious of Russia, but keep in mind, so you still have lots of people in Russia who would like to see Russia expand. And you have mm -hmm. lots of people in Russia who want at least part of Ukraine, if not all of Ukraine, they would love parts of Ukraine. And so lots of people are actually behind the war. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know about any specific uh, statistics or something like that. But yeah, it's there's also the things uh, the, the the invasion of Ukraine didn't make uh, Putin less popular. On the contrary, it made him more popular among Russians. Um, so the, the Russian approval ratings um started increasing and are still as far as i see on the on the rise because and and lots of people thought lots of analysts thought that uh that putin's decision to invade ukraine was actually um a tactic to distract from russian or putin's failures and to win the population over again uh because this is a this is a recurring theme of certain rulers if things don't go the right way start a war <laughs> and win and win the population over and it worked in this case that works uh michael says d wood what sort of bible you read translation etc uh i change it i change it every couple i've changed it every couple of years so first uh when i became a christian in jail I was reading the king james bible given to me by the gideons uh, then I switched to New King James, then I was reading NIV, then the New Revised Standard, then the New American Standard, most recently ESV for the past couple of years when I'm reading something. Sam Bidwell asked David Wood, you read Crime and Punishment? Of course I have, read it in high school. It was signed by AP English. It drove me insane. When that was done to U.S. soldiers, two nukes were dropped. Putin might make the same strategical decisions. Be careful, terrorists. I don't think he's going to drop nukes. He can run his mouth about it, but I don't think he's going to be dropping nukes on stuff. And really, I don't think he wants to go after jihadis very much right now. Um, he might. I mean, he's going to have to do something, especially if it becomes clear that it is just ISIS. He's going to have to do something to save face. But he doesn't, he's got a lot of Muslims. He even has Muslims in his army and so on. So I don't think he wants to tick off Muslims. Fortunately for him, fortunately for him, lots of people view ISIS as <laughs> youth. <laughs> as the CIA and Mossad now, thanks to a Syrian girl. And so he, he might not have as much problem as, uh, as we might think if he really starts blow up, blasting away at ISIS. That's Even true. more. <clears throat> That's All what right. they do. Let's let Syrian girl wrap things up for us here. It's, it's not even, the, like the mask has completely fallen off with this attack, seriously. Uh, the mask it, has it fallen makes off. It absolutely no sense that ISIS would return at this opportune moment. Um, and I, it's also makes no sense that ISIS, which has been active without, without, without break, just not covered as much in the media because it's not the kind of threat it was eight years ago. Uh, because of that, we're going to pretend that they just returned and it makes no sense that they'd go after Russia. Who's been wrecking ISIS since ISIS started. It makes no sense. It makes no sense in Syrian girl's mind. Gosh, she's smart super suspicious that the united states knew anything uh so uh, specific about the terrorist attack weeks in advance 
that they knew it was going to be a concert. You know, was that a warning or was that a threat? Was that a threat? Uh, I'm going to... Did you hear that? Report more as the story develops. Thank you very much. Please follow me at Partisan Girl. Yeah. Did you hear what she just said? When the United States warned people, hey, we have intelligence that ISIS is plotting an attack. (laughs) So be careful, guys. You need to stay away from gatherings because we have intel that they are targeting a gathering, some sort of gathering, possibly a concert. And they warn people about this. Because they have, they don't know the specifics, but they they they're monitoring what goes on online, and some people are talking about the, an attack, and so they warn people. How does she interpret this? How could they have known? How could they have known about this? Oh my goodness, was this a warning or a threat? Like this was actually the U.S. saying, uh, "Hey, Putin, you better uh, you better watch what you do at the U.N. voting because if you don't, this attack's coming at you because we we actually control ISIS according to Syrian girl." We're dealing with lunatics so, here, man. This is so dumb. It's like um, on the one hand they are saying that uh, America is or American intelligence is such an evil mastermind that it can do anything anywhere whenever they want behind the scenes on the other hand she's like how how did america know about this terrorist attack no idea (laughs) (sighs) wow man hey guys we talked about this yesterday but i mean think about this so you have government agencies monitoring what goes on in chat in chat groups and so on um so that uh, several years ago, the FBI, two FBI agents showed up at my door. Uh, David, we have a, and they were actually super cool. So they told me how to contact them in case of any problems or any uh, any specific information and so on. But uh, yeah, they showed up. They told me that they have credible threats against me. And they said, it's over something you were folding with the Quran. So this was in the Quranagami. This was in the, this was when Quranagami was going on. Um. And I started, I started explaining it instantly. I started going, well, I, yeah, but I was doing that. And he goes, sir, we're not here to judge what you do with your free speech. We're here to inform you <laughs> that there are credible threats against you. And uh, so anyway, the, the guys were cool. But, but think about this. They had information about threats against me. They don't have any specifics. They don't have any specifics. So someone could have actually killed me two weeks later and slaughtered nice. me. And following Syria Girl's logic, my viewers would have to say, oh, my goodness, the FBI warned David ahead of time about an attack. And then he was attacked. How did they know about the attack? Were they behind it when they showed up at his door? Was that a warning or a threat? Were they threatening him? Was that a threat? That's exactly what she just did. U.S. gets some intel. Warn Russia. They warn Russia, guys. We've 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 got some news about an attack. You need to you need to take this seriously. Russia says, "Oh, you're just trying to cause division with us. Oh, let's just drink the vodka." Then a bunch of people get killed, and then you see the United States was announcing that they were behind it. Syrian girl said it. We're we're dealing with uh, super smart people here who become popular in Dawa right now. This is why Syrian girls should be the foremost political political commentator on everything put that girl on al jazeera smart. right now yes the most she credible needs, news source on the in the world she needs to team up with candace owens and andrew tate to start their own news network it would be the greatest thing ever and uh-huh. and and dare i say it nick Fuentes, get him on there the, the, okay there, there's one redeeming quality about her which is that she hates andrew tate and Does she? she was actually yeah, oh, Syrian girl hates Andrew Tate, and she started following me when I was when I was um, talking about Andrew Tate because she was like, "I don't understand what all these conservatives siding with Andrew Tate. Why would they do this? He's such a disgusting, disgusting sex trafficker." And hmm. when people were saying to her back then, "There is no evidence. There is no evidence," she was like, "What are you talking about? What? There is no evidence. Look here. Here is the evidence. Here is the evidence." And now she, when it comes to the to these wars, she's like, "Well, oh, there is no evidence. There is no evidence. There is no evidence." Wow! 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 Uh, ISIS was a byproduct of the resentment and power vacuum created by the Iraq War and U.S. funding of moderate rebels. Yeah, there's a lot of factors involved in uh, in uh, with with ISIS. Um, 
it's another thing we've talked about this before. Uh, in the West, we have this mindset of, hey, if you've got a, if your country has a evil, brutal tyrant in charge, get rid of the tyrant, and then uh, democracy and freedom will flourish. Why do we think that? Because that's what worked here. And we think, oh, that'll work. That'll work in other places too. So just get rid of Assad. Just get rid of uh, Saddam Hussein. Just get rid of Gaddafi. And then freedom and democracy are going to flourish. <laughs> and then we, so we help people get rid of Saddam Hussein. And then what happens? Oh, wait a minute. All these guys are blowing up each other's mosques all of a sudden. And start, why are they, why is everyone killing happen? each other? What's going on there? Hmm. Oh, Saddam. Keep in mind, I'm not defending a Saddam here. I'm saying people need to be aware of, of how the world actually works. You can have an evil dictator. And he's doing something of value to the world, right? And what was Saddam doing that was actually valuable to the world? He was keeping the jihadis in check because they were terrified of him. You, you cross Saddam, you you mess with Saddam, you got out of line with Saddam, you start blowing blowing else blowing someone else away, and Saddam's going to come into your town with tanks the next day. And so they're terrified of him. So they he kept them in check. Then you get rid of him and say, hey, we'll 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 get a Western style government in there. And the and the same jihadis are not scared of a Western style government. And so they start, ah, now we can finally start blowing each other's moss up and stuff like that. What? And you eventually get ISIS. Yeah. And well, oh, how did this happen? Oh, it must be the CIA. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Uh, important to point out, I guess, uh, when you say that Saddam was keeping things in check, um, sometimes people like to admire tough characters and things like that. Saddam wasn't just some tough guy who was keeping things in check. When he cracked down on a certain part of the population, uh, he didn't just keep things in check. He committed some seriously brutal atrocities against uh, those populations, against certain mm -hmm. demographics, against individuals. Uh, the Kurdish population especially is very well aware of what he what he uh, does, um, including um, gassing thousands of Kurdish people indiscriminately to get rid of them uh, because because he fears rebellion and so on. Uh, having families abducted and their women raped and so on. It's, he was sick. Yeah. Uh, and so, guys, with the uh, with the brutal tyrants, if they are brutal tyrants towards everyone, then there is a sense in which if you don't get out of line, then you might be able to actually function. And so terrorists are actually, I'm saying this because uh, I have a, I haven't seen him in years, but uh, I knew a guy, I knew a guy, he lived in Michigan and he was from Syria and I was asking him about Syria and stuff. And he go, he made this uh, amazing claim. He said, uh, cause he says he goes back to Syria to visit family every couple of years. And I was like, ah, oh, you, you feel, you feel safe over there in Syria. This is before, this is before the, uh, the Arab spring and the, uh, and all the fighting and so on. So this is probably 2000. This is way back in the day, probably 2010 or something like that. And so I was asking about Syria. I was like, oh, you feel safe when you go over there? He goes, what are you talking about? He goes, I, I feel safer in Damascus than I feel in Dearborn, Michigan. And I go, what? What are you talking about, man? Don't you have don't you have like Muslims over there who might want to do something? He goes, he goes, no, 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 no. He goes, every Muslim over there knows if he goes, if they go in and then they attack a Christian, they know they're going to be soldiers dragging them out of their houses in the middle of in the middle of the night, take them out to the public square and shooting them. And so it's just, like think about the mentality, right? They understand they have a brutal government that will just that will just kill them if they get out of line. But that actually keeps them in line. And then we in the West, oh, Arab Spring, let's get rid of Assad. And then everything's going to be uh, everything would be fine there. No, it wouldn't be fine there. No, it wouldn't be fine there. Uh, keep in mind, not a fan of Assad. I think he's a scumbag. But <laughs> sometimes you could be a scumbag and be keeping worse threats in in check. And so I the only point, the only point, the only point, the only point I'm making all this is if you come up with a brilliant plan, let's get rid of the let's get rid of the dictator. You need to be able to perform the same functions that the dict the same good functions that the dictator was performing. If they are keeping jihadis in check, and you have no plan for keeping jihadis in check. You need to come up with a plan for keeping the jihadis in check before you say, "Let's get rid of the let's get rid of the dictator." That's also awesome uh, This is uh, one thing that I um, observed and kind of he heard when I was in Iraq once, um, which was uh, when, when I was in, in in Najaf, which is a Shia place, uh, central south, um, and 
So what, what I heard there was basically that when Saddam was in power, people were afraid of the government. Uh, but after Saddam, now they are <laughs> afraid of other Iraqis, basically. Um, oh, I actually see. Uh, let me check these comments here. Uh, is the rate of apostasy really increasing? How bad or good is it? I haven't seen anything since like uh, the, the most recent statistic when that Muslims started using was 24% among young Muslims, 24% apostasy rate against young Muslims. But that was up from close to 0% in the early 2000s. So that is a massive increase in the apostasy rate. I don't know what it is now, but I would have to say if it went from close to zero to around a quarter, yeah, it's been increasing and really, really rapidly. So no way around that. And our job is to let's get it to 100, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're at 24 right now. Let's get it to 100. From the river to the sea, Mohijab wants to pee. <laughs> I don't call him the golden showers king for nothing. And anyone who's tuning in right now is like, what? Why are you guys saying golden showers? Why are you attacking him later? No, 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 that's what he says to us. He's the one who uh, runs his mouth about golden showers to us. We just, uh, we just inform people. Uh, check true. the Washington Institute for Near East Policy interactive map of global Daesh activity since July 2018. Daesh has carried out over 14,000 attacks. Actually, I want that. That would be good to share later on. I am screenshotting that little uh, thing right there. Since so, Think about this. Since 2018, Daesh has carried out over 14,000 attacks. What is Syrian girl? What is Andrew Tate? What do all these people who apparently uh, are, are reporters but have no, no idea what's going on in the world? What do they say? Oh, how did ISIS just come out of nowhere after completely disappearing for all these years? <laughs> super, super smart. Super, super smart. Super intelligent. Alhamdulillah. Uh, why does Syrian girl look like Sid the Sloth? Was that an Don't actual? Say sloth? that. Yeah, that's mean. Is that an actual sloth or? Because uh... there's the only sloth I know is sloth from the Goonies, and then like actual sloths. Uh, so I don't know who that is. But yeah. I don't know any actual. Yeah, most people, most most people, most people in the chat were saying she's pretty. So I don't know what you're complaining about. Unless said the sloth is a is a pretty sloth. I don't know. Uh, hag. See, she was talking about. You said she was calling people hags. <laughs> what? We got it. Got a yeah, super chat yeah. from hag here. Yeah, yeah. Th th that's the thing. I mean, um, yeah. Whatever, whatever. Move on. I'm a Syrian girl in the Syrian world. My face is plastic. <laughs> It's fantastic. Come on, D-Wood. Let's come on, D-Wood. Let's go. come on, D-Wood. Let's go party. Uh-oh. Uh here we have it. Russians are the most dangerous white people in the world, not the kind of folks to mess around with. They won't forgive. That's part of when I was when I was talking about why I'm not a fan of uh, Russians invading anything. Those are some tough dudes, man. They are some tough dudes. How many people, how many, how many of the world's most powerful armies that have ever been thought they were going to go mess around and invade Russia and got really, really embarrassed by a bunch of drunk Russians with clubs in their hands sitting in the snow in their bare feet? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Uh, I have two more videos from Syrian Go, but they're both they're both really, really short. But I wanted to check these out because she's actually on the scene and you can see what's actually going on outside. So that was in in like a hotel room or something like that. But then she actually uh, goes out to to see what's going on and does not waste time promoting some conspiracy theories. Let's see. I prefer Syrian boy. reporting from you said you prefer what Syrian boy. But yeah, continue Syrian boy. Moscow, where the terrorist attack happened behind me there, you'll see the burnt building where the grenades went off, where the terrorists killed a plus of 60 people. Uh, we have here the police, uh, security services, um, and uh, also mourners who are putting flowers down for the deceased. Um, Pretty good reporting so far, right? Showing people outside, showing the showing the people outside, showing the scene. Pretty, pretty good reporting, Syrian girl. I am impressed that you didn't come out with some insane conspiracy theory pretty, pretty while you're good. out there amid all these people. 
You know, there's an element of shock here. Essentially, it's a feeling of the war has come to the heart of Russia. That's good. Reporting on people's feelings. Reporting on people's oh. feelings. Showing people good. the location. Mm-hmm. You actually jump on a plane and go out and you're on location filming outside there. Giving people an idea of what people are feeling. This is this is good, high quality reporting. Good, and good, good. When I'm talking about the war, I'm talking about the war in Ukraine. Because in spite of the claims that ISIS was behind this, it's very clear to people here that Ukraine is somehow implicated. Uh, this, despite the claims that ISIS is behind this, Ukraine is implicated. So uh, if, if it then turns out that ISIS is indeed behind this and ISIS directly says it was us and we are proud, and it's like, okay, yes, it is ISIS, but ISIS is acting on behalf of Ukraine. All right. <laughs> it's very, but I mean, it's just, hey, let me report, let me give some on the scene reporting so to keep everyone informed. Oh, by the way, everyone here knows that it's uh, Ukraine. And not only Ukraine, but the CIA, Mossad. <laughs> and not only Ukraine, not only Ukraine, but the CIA and Mossad. See, those are the, those are the big three right there. Those are the big three. That's your uh, that's the trifecta, the trifecta of evil global domination. We got to. Uh, I, I can CIA. imagine that she goes around and, uh, and goes to people in Russia in the street and is like, uh, uh, you know, this was this was uh, CIA and Ukraine, right? And people are like, uh, we we don't we don't know you. We're waiting for more information. And she's like, no, no, no. It was it was CIA and Ukraine. That's probably how the conversation is going. That's what she means when she says everybody knows it was that. Oh my goodness. So and so uh, here I am. ISIS has claimed responsibility. People on social media are talking about ISIS, but here on the ground everyone knows it was uh Ukraine and the CIA and Mossad working together uh uh came up with a fake Muslim preacher and uh rallied support on Telegram and finally found some jihadis willing to Go attack Russia. Wow. This is how it works. The whole gang of uh, scum and villainy that have been targeting Russia for its stance, uh, not only against NATO, but in the Middle East. Um, and I'll, I'm going to take you around to show you what I can show you. All right. She's going to take us around. I don't, know. I don't know what she just said, but yes. She said she's going to take us around and show us what's going on here in this place where everyone knows that it's actually Ukraine and uh, and around. Mossad and the CIA. So we're going to watch one she more. Even will show us the world. Going to watch one more super short clip from uh, Syrian girl. Greetings, D Wood and AP. I've noticed uh, PBD video comments are getting flooded by anti-Semitic jihadis more and more. What a shame! Yeah, it's a. Uh, that's happening that's happening everywhere that's happening everywhere all over social media they are very aggressive keep in mind there are way more muslims in the world than there are jews and so it's very easy once they get uh, fixated on something to flood comment sections everywhere but guys I've said it before i'll say it again ten thousand times there's a silver lining to this dark cloud and the silver lining is they are absolutely desperate right now for a reason And they're trying everything. They're trying everything they possibly can right now because they understand that it won't work 10 years from now. It will be too late. The avalanche will be too far in motion to stop at that point. And so hold your ground, ladies and gentlemen, because if we can endure this, they have no plan B. They have no plan B. That's good news. Good news. So as much as it sucks, as much as it sucks, it it would be like if you had a I don't know. It would be like if you had a, a big army and you have this uh, this army surrounded and they're uh, they're they're demoralized and so on. All of a sudden, they launch some finals. Just ah, we have to do it right now. Ah, let's go out and they fight. And, you, and you're like, oh no, they're attacking. But wait a minute, this is kind of their last. This is kind of their last stand. I'm not saying the last stand of Islam. Uh, there was still there was still, of course, be, be plenty of Muslims even after an avalanche of apostasy. The point is, as far as them like actually thinking, well, oh, we can we're we're on the verge of conquering the world and taking over the world. That's uh, that's about to go away. That's about to go away. Yeah. In, 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 in other words, after if 
if the next if they do not pull something off over the next couple of years, they're not if they do not have some big shift over the next couple of years, and it ain't gonna happen by oh Sneeko converted to Islam, oh Sean King tool, now we're gonna win. It's not gonna be something stupid like that. Something big, some big change has to happen. If they do not, I don't know what it would be. I don't think they're gonna get it. If they do not get the big whatever big thing they're looking for right now to, to turn the tides, you'll still have you'll still have Islam, but when they're thinking about taking over the world, it would be like, oh, it must be like centuries in the future right now, because we are way too weak to do anything about this right now. So maybe, maybe centuries in the future will make our comeback. But notice the world will be a, a much safer place in the meantime. Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> Uh, do you consider Russia to be part of Western civilization or is it just its own thing? I would kind of think of it's it, it's its own thing. Russians yeah, developed independently been. of to uh, to uh, to the West and were never connected. I mean, it's connected. Everything's connected. But yeah, they're kind of their own. They're kind of the, in their own category. Yeah, always yeah. have been. And mm -hmm. that's that's the way they view it, too. That's the way um, that's the way Russia generally views it. Hey, it's it's extreme learner. It's extreme learner. That was the guy who was uh, posting uh, conspiracy theories earlier that we went through. Uh, but here we have some more. As if it's impossible for Ukraine to send the footage to ISIS, given Muslim terrorists are fighting for Ukraine, they can easily have their context. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So this is meant to. So ISIS claimed responsibility. We're the ones who did it, and they post the footage. And then ah, but if Ukraine is actually doing, and ISIS is just lying, and then Ukraine sends ISIS the footage and says, hey, we know you guys are lying because it's actually us, Ukraine and the CIA and Mossad. You guys are just lying about when you're taking credibility. But here, we're going to help you lie. We'll send you the footage. You go ahead and release the footage of the attack, and then that'll strengthen your case that you're actually behind it. That's that's an extreme learner here. Hey, extreme. Stupid. Uh, <laughs> better luck next time. <laughs> you also you see all the all those Muslim terrorists fighting for Ukraine in Ukraine, right? Well, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, you see, yeah. <laughs> so stupid. Man. Uh, what's mm -hmm. up with the obsession with and contradictory hadiths about? Uh, this is one of those weird sounds, right? Like Khorasan. Khorasan, yeah. Khor Khorasan. It's, it's just Khorasan, yeah. It's <laughs> it's a harsh H, Khorasan. It's got a K on there. Khorasan. Hak. Hak of the Hikma. Hak. We got the we got the Hak. We got the Hikma. And we got the Khorasan. Black <laughs> flags will appear from Khorasan. Yeah. So will the Dajjal. You see? Yeah. It's yeah, all connected. Yeah. I'm not sure if this is one of those one of those oh wait this is from Termidi. Um I'm not sure if those are authentic to be honest. Um what one was that? Termidi two two six nine. This is a weak hadith. The black flags will mm -hmm. come from Khorasan. Nothing shall turn them back until they are planted in Jerusalem. So black according flags. to those Islam, this is uh this is not authentic. Fire. Um and then there is uh, Musnad Ahmad 33. I'm not, I'm just not sure how that is graded. I'll have to check that out in a little second. Yes. That is... That, okay, it says, it says in this one, we did not intend anything but good. And he said, the messenger of Allah told us that Dajjal will emerge from a land in the east called Khorasan, and he will be followed by people with faces like hammer shields. Um, <laughs> Dar es Salaam graded this as sahih, as authentic, but uh, from the narration here, it, it just looks like one of those hadiths that people made up later on when they were confronted with different... Um, with so different it, tribes and populations. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, it does say that the Dajjal will emerge from a land called Khorasan. The thing is, um, there, are, there, are, there are reports that the Dajjal will come from the West, and then that there are, there are ones that say that he, the, he will come from, the, from, from Khorasan. So then, wherever, wherever, wherever he actually comes from, you see, this is the proof. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yes, that's how, that's how that's how Muhammad rolled. Let me just say everything that could ever possibly happen in any situation. And uh... I, to be honest, I don't believe that he actually ever said. No, this. yeah, I know. I, this is clear. This is. I would say these are clearly later fabrications. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
the pieces of Jesus in all of your hearts. Indeed. I'm David, hungry. are you friends with Jay Smith? Yes. Uh, Richard H. Super sticker. Ah, why? When, Ecam? When are we going to see the super stickers? I guess people, I guess people in the chat see them. Never. Here, they give us never, the descriptions. You're never going to see them. D. Wood, thank you for explaining that about ISIS. Yes, guys, that's one of the takeaways. Learn what the actual agenda and goals of ISIS are, because when people are saying, why isn't ISIS attacking Israel? There are reasons they're focusing on other things for the most part. There are reasons for it. And it makes perfect sense. All these guys going, it makes no sense. If they were Muslim, they would be, if they were jihadis, they would be focusing on Israel. Not given, no, again, they believe it would be stupid and a way, massive waste of time to put all your energies into focusing on, on, on attacking things that you can't possibly win because Allah's not going to bless you because you have all this sin and rebellion and apostasy and uh, heresy in your community. It makes the perfect sense. Uh, by the way, where did Chloe L go? Haven't seen her post. Yeah, yeah. Chloe uh, used to be way more active. Um, she's taken. Uh, she's taken. Uh, I mean, she was here. Uh, she showed up a little bit yesterday. But uh, yeah, she's she's kind of taken a break from uh, from social media for a bit, which is wise because it, it, you can. It does affect you being involved with so much uh, so much weird stuff online. Yeah, shame on Chloe for not being active. Shame on Chloe. Uh, she's too, oh, it's about a Syrian girl. She's too white to be Syrian. Must be a colonizer. <laughs> yeah, she's supposed to be, supposed to be brown or she's a colonizer. She's a European colonizer. Uh, did the same spirit visit both Muhammad and Joseph Smith? That is a theory. They seem to, uh, they seem to have very similar characteristics, but a lot of that you could just say is, uh, human nature. In other words, if you're a guy and you uh, somehow uh, are starting your own religion, you, I don't think you need some specific demon to be telling you to, uh, hey, make up revelations that give you a bunch of girls to bang. Right? It's like when I first, uh, I only recently, I guess within the last few years at some point, uh, sat down and uh, because of a religion course, started reading more about Mormonism and found out about its history and uh, didn't about take a religion course, Smith. man. Come on. Yeah, I would never did. But uh, but when I did, I <laughs> I learned about Joseph Smith and I thought, wait a minute, this is much more messed up than I actually thought. And I started having kind of uh, similar feelings about it that I have about Islam in a way, in terms of the moral aspect of its history, despite the fact that uh, Mormonism today, after it has been kind of, uh, you know, the, the fundamental aspect, the fundamentalist aspect has been drowned out and has been turned into this, into, into a different uh, modern religion. Uh, most Mormons don't do these and, and don't acknowledge these messed up things anymore. It is still true that it is historically quite a messed up religion yep not pretty with that said if you ever run into some mormons they'll be the nicest guys in the world man super nice people i know that's, that's super yeah. nice nicest nicest people around in the world nicest people in the world yeah hey d wood and ap when you visited did you go to magna yehuda also will you be down to host yosef haddad at some point your take on his case I think uh, Mahna Yehuda is a, is a market that uh, that is in Jerusalem. Somebody told me to go there. Oh uh, yeah, I, yeah. I went th I went there before. It was jam packed. That's when there were there were Jews like uh, they were all young, but they were like young like Orthodox Jews, full full gear and stuff like that. Uh, who were like, hey, you're David Wood. Can I get a picture? <laughs> <laughs> nice. But that was that was like that was like four years ago or something. But. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we went we went to the market when it was uh it was jam packed, but um yeah, AP didn't get to go. No, I didn't. We didn't go anywhere AP. except just, except just where we had to go. Uh what about Yosef Haddad? Will you be down to host Yosef Haddad at some point and what's your take? I would, I would love to. He's an Israeli Arab um guy who um does a lot of good pro Israel stuff. Um yeah, possible. Inshallah. You see, this is the proof that D. Wood led the Jews' attack on Moscow. They call the symbol on their flag the Star of David. You see, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. 
Why didn't I? That would be a power. That would be powerful proof. But guys, those are the kinds of cases that you could make if you wanted to. You see, it's powerful stuff. You see. Um. All right. Let's watch this final clip from uh from our our reporter on the ground, Syrian girl. This is uh this is just really uh I just wanted to give her a final opportunity so that she can it's not embarrass herself clip. and post a, a few words without some insane conspiracy theory. Finally. Behind me, people are putting down flowers for the deceased. Uh, 60 to 90 dead last I heard, and it's climbing because there's many injured also in hospital. And you know, NATO and friends, including Israel, are not going to stop until the whole world looks like this because they're gunning for the apocalypse. And no one here believes this is just a singular case of ISIS killing bombings. No one there believes it, ladies and gentlemen. No one there, <clears throat> no one there believes it. And she has obviously interviewed everyone there. <clears throat> She's obviously she has, interviewed anyone there. She has advanced the deep intel. It's, it's so funny that uh, she can't make a single, she can't publish a single video without just adding something really That's what's amazing, right? It can be, look, they're laying out flowers because NATO's... <laughs> Like what? <laughs> NATO will not stop until this. Everything looks like everything's been destroyed. That's what NATO's doing. Wait, why is NATO doing? Why is NATO even part of this discussion? Oh, because Russia invaded Ukraine. Durr. What? What? Why is Gaza getting bombed, Syrian girl? Oh, because Israel because will not stop until the entire world has been bombed, or it's because of that big invasion they killed a bunch of people. It's just amazing. That like someone could do something and then there's a reaction. Oh, you see the people reacting this because they want to destroy the entire world. Everybody what knows what's really going on. Oh boy. I think we're dealing with the top brass there. All right. Now we're going to look at some others. We're going to look at, we're going to go through, through, through some tweets, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's check Shalom. out some. Joshua here says, uh, your brother in Christ and too many Marys did a stream today about, let's say Islam's sexual ethics with animals, necro relations and the Bible view on animals. Uh, hey guys, um, that sounds like good stuff. Yeah, you might want to check that out. So after we're done here, you guys might want to check that out. So uh, was that on your brother in Christ channel or Too Many Marys channel? Uh, sounds like everyone... a beautiful thing to talk about. Yeah, yeah. And guys, Too Many Marys, she knows a lot about the Muslim sources. She has a and weird, a weird memory for memorizing massive amounts of information, and so yeah. I bet i bet that live stream is filled with some pretty dope stuff so check that out yeah, she's, she's sick yeah. <laughs> many misinformed christians think russia is part of the ezekiel 38 to 39 thinking russia will lead a coalition of muslim countries to attack israel but it's not true it's post-millennial rule related okay so for all you everyone who's uh focusing on ezekiel 38 to 39 you have some commentary there Atakan says, Abby, can you check Shake Your Booty getting more radical? I did it a while. I did it while I was bored and playing with AI sound cover. I'll delete. It's probably terrible. I'll check it out. Shake Your Booty <laughs> getting more radical. <laughs> I'll check it out. It sounds good. Islam's holy sites are all stolen from others and based on fabricated stories. Kaaba stolen what from pagans. you say that? That's pretty uh, Islamophobic there, said. Uh, Kaaba stolen from pagans with the fake Abraham visit story and Al-Aqsa stolen from Jews with fake uh, Muhammad visit story. Yeah, that's that's just how you... Just, hey, uh, Elon Musk, I had a vision that that money belongs to me. Now you have to give it to me. Islam doesn't steal. It takes what rightfully belonged to it mm -hmm. in the past before it existed. Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, let's see here. Love you guys. Keep on keeping on. Finally catching you live. 2 a.m. alarm from South Africa. Never stop calling out the absolute crap out there. We won't until they saw our heads off. And even after they saw our heads off, I'm going to come back as ghosts to haunt them. If you have seen The Prophet Tales, uh, episode one out of one episode, uh, you might one have seen... One You might have seen that even when they chop off my head, I still continue talking. So there you have it. Powerful, powerful, powerful. 
ISIS. It won't let me use the acronym. Yeah, that's YouTube for you. The group that never really broke up, but no one wants to see their act anymore. Keep preaching the truth. Yeah, they still, they're still out there. Yeah, what I find so uh, sad about ISIS, it's like um, ISIS meant something completely different. It was an interesting Egyptian goddess. And, and then, they then screwed the it Islamic up. state came around and completely ruined this. Mm -hmm. Ruined this. Now you can't even talk about ISIS anymore without mm -hmm. making it about Islamic terrorism. Yeah, can you imagine if you have some class on you know, ancient deities and so on you have to talk about isis and everyone's just thinking what isis was back there oh, ISIS. Raging jihad? Oh, 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 ISIS. what <laughs> oh and here's the comment i wanted to get to before moving on to some other uh twitter uh doppelgandist uh why is syrian girl stuttering say that wouldn't have made sense later it wouldn't have made sense later so we had to get down to that all right <clears throat> now yeah that is a good question why is syrian girl stuttering and other people pointing out why she constantly looking away from the camera. I don't know. You see, is she taking orders from Putin? Hmm? Yeah. That's she, actually Putin she... behind the camera and saying, "Hey, say this, say this, say this, say this." Say you this. must do this, or you get no vodka. You give, we yeah. give you no vodka unless you say what we tell you. I don't want money. You do what I say. <laughs> give us the money, Syrian girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's next? I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! Y'all know what that means. <laughs> Muslim cowboy. <laughs> Russia, my heart goes out to you and all the families of the DC. Yeah, see, now this is just like Syrian girl. He's 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 making a nice comment. Just, as long as he doesn't have some insane conspiracy theories to go along with. Wait a minute. Since when does Muslim Cowboy care about the dirty infidels in their lives? He cares about the Russians. Russia, my heart goes out to you and the families of the DCs. Yeah, yeah. You must have been doing something correct to upset Israel enough to... Wait, what? <laughs> you must have been doing something correct to upset Israel enough to make them do another false flag. Israel that secret escalated. intelligence hey, services at it again. Yeehaw! 656 likes. 156 <laughs> retweets. Muslim Calvo, you heard it here, folks. You know what's so funny? These guys, uh, an Isla Islamist like him, can just go out there and publicly make these stupid assertions without any piece of evidence and thereby actually lie this, this is a form of lying thereby lie and get the approval of others when um these people know that under an islamic state if they made accus baseless accusations against other people within an islamic state they would be publicly punished for that kind of stuff <laughs> But they're fine with doing it as long as it's like as it's a uh, public discussion uh, about an a perceived enemy. They're not like, yeah, let's just lie, let's just make stuff up. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, we're gonna give Muslim cowboy one more chance to completely redeem himself and not say something insane and stupid. And he will redeem himself, probably. Yes, he is. He learned his lesson well. So here we go. Just watch an uncensored video circulating from the horrible carnage in Russia. <laughs> I listened to the Arabic and it sounded so bad. Then one of the terrorists got caught by the special forces and he was crying like the IDF soldiers do when they are being fired at. Totally Jews who did it. Wow. You see the so this guy's talking the about... Here? This guy's talking about uh, people who are not even Arabs speaking Arabic, which apparently sounded, sounds bad to him. And his conclusion is, it's definitely Jews. <clears throat> yeah, and they're... <laughs> and, and keep in mind, what his reasoning is here. So it's uh, bad Arabic, and they cried. Hey, IDF soldiers cried. Cry. Cry. Well, 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 well. That's the reason. I, uh, I once met some met somebody. I once met a Jew, and that Jew, when he learned about some horrible news, he started crying, <clears throat> and that just reminds me 
that reminds me of these people that I saw in that video. They were crying too. You know who and, else uh, cries? Jews. They yep. for, it was the Jews. That's you how easy it, it is. Folks. Ask me. And these guys were crying because they're Jews, not because they were getting tortured by Russians. Because Jews cry, everybody knows. Jews Isn't that cry, funny? Indeed. These guys, these guys are all. Uh, these guys were clearly getting tortured by Russians to get information out of them, and then they spill all the information. They are these guys were uh, supposedly uh, uh, they were Tajik, so I don't know if they were. In, yeah. yeah. So if they're speaking Arabic at all, yeah, it's not. They're from a different area. So it's not going to be the best. And what's his, what's a, uh, what's Muslim Cowboys conclusion? Therefore, they're actually Jews. Pretty sure Tajiks uh, speak a Turkic language. Uh, I think that's a, that is, or isn't that, a, more, isn't that a, more connected to Persian or something like that? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like an, it's like an uh, Iranian Turkic language, uh, which is Tajik. And they also speak Russian. So um, it, it, because it is a former uh, Soviet country um you, you don't ex you don't usually expect these people to speak arabic so um that that's that's that but uh, I, don't, I don't even know all right well that's the muslim cowboys reaction you see they're crying and these guys who are tajik uh speak tajik uh they their their arabic is crap and so they're actually jews you heard it here folks 100 percent certainty it was the Jews, because the Muslim cowboy, one of the world's leading up up and coming defenders of pedophilia. The oh, by cowboy. the way, by the way, very important thing here. Now, Muslim cowboy, the imbecile, he points out that these uh, these terrorists on the videos were crying, and or, or one of them was crying, um, and that just reminds me of Jews because who else cries? Jews. Um, there, there are some details that are going around uh, that were spread online and also published by Russian media and Russian officials of uh, how Russian security forces treated the suspects um, and, and those that were confirmed to be terrorists. Um, it, I commented on this earlier and said, if, if Israel treated uh, Hamas the way Russia treats terrorists, just imagine the outrage. But uh, there were videos going around. One of those includes uh, one of the terrorists having his um, his head. His head is completely uh, full of blood. His face is full of blood. His head is wrapped up. Uh, because apparently what they did, and there's also camera footage of it, what they did is to cut off his ears. Yeah, they Van Gogh'd him. They Vincent Van Gogh'd and force him. Fed, force fed his ears to the guy to, uh, during interrogation to find out playing. more about, about their background. So this is what they're doing. This is what the Russian security forces are doing to the terrorist. They cut off the guy's ear and forcibly feed it to him to get as much information out of, out of the guy as possible. And then Muslim cowboys are like, <laughs> the guy was crying. crying. He's crying. <laughs> <laughs> and you Muslim know, cowboy, if somebody did that to you, I don't know if you, I don't know what you would do. Yeah. Uh, you've seen these, You've seen these videos when they get the confessions out of the Hamas guys and he's just sitting in an office in a chair and he's spilling, spilling, spilling the beans about everything that uh, he's been doing for Hamas. And they yeah. look like they're all messed up and in pain. He's like, yes, so, yes, yeah, so that's when we crossed the border. And it's like, what, what are you crying about? It's, guess what? They just been torturing the crap out of you for days, possibly. And the only way, the only way to stop the constant agonizing pain, and it doesn't have to just be like mangling someone. It, it, there's all sorts of like psychological methods and so on that you can use to just. I think Israel mostly does psychological. Torture. Yeah, you don't, you, you just don't let them, you don't let them sleep and so on, all kinds of things. Um, uh, waterboarding, you, you're not, you're not, you're not really hurting anyone at all, but it messes you up and so on. Anyway, then the only way you can end this and be our friend is if you just come down here and start talking and then boy, they, they start talking, but you see, oh, look that, look, they sound exactly like these other guys that Russia caught. So I guess ISIS is Hamas. Wait a minute. Isn't that what Israel has been saying for a while? And you are bringing a good, a good point. Uh, Muslim cowboy here is saying, no, those IDF soldiers were crying. Um, 
Have you seen the footage of of your Hamas terrorists when they were cap- taken captive and they were uh, letting it all out and say saying everything they did? Uh, have you seen how pathetic those guys look? They look <laughs> yeah, pretty, we, pretty we did, pathetic. Uh, we did bad things and we shouldn't have done those bad things. And yeah, that's a, and I, I I personally never really wanted to do those bad things. <laughs> All right, so that was Muslim Cowboy, his brilliant two cents. Next, we're going to have Andrew Tate, the top G himself, the smartest man in the world, according to him. Uh, A couple super chats real quick before Andrew Tate. I'm so happy that this guy blocked me on Twitter, and now we have to look at him again. Ezra be like, Ezra be like, I got some more followers than she got brain cells. That's (laughs) That's exactly what Ezra would be saying. (laughs) Good. Be a light through your clothing at Eli Apparel. Nice. Here's my Beast. one tenth of a shekel for the Holy Temple. <laughs> Beast. Uh, so Israel came from Ukraine. <laughs> Here we go. We'll get it. So Israel came from Ukraine wearing ISIS outfits in order to carry out their undercover CIA operation, Project Allahu Akbar, against Russia. That is pretty much the the dominant theory among the Twitter Dawagandas of all stripes. Yes, that is correct. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, here we have... Uh, remember, Russia is now considered part of the Shiite front. The Alawis, like Assad, gained Shiite status through Sadr's fatwa in 1973. Yeah, Russia sides with Iran and Assad. The main, the main two, the main two fronts for ISIS. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you, what do you think about Putin not acknowledging the confession of ISIS, but trying to blame Ukraine? Yeah, I think it's deceptive, but completely understandable in a war. Uh, hey, there's just a terrorist attack. Do we want a two-front war dealing with Ukraine and the uh, and ISIS? No. So let's try and link it to Ukraine uh, so we can focus on them for a while. Plus, it's also obvious that Putin is not the most honest guy out there. So uh, you think he will, <laughs> he will use the opportunity, of course, to make a move here. Oh, hey, here's an important point. Here's an important point. Meredith says Syrian girl confirmed the first and second Jewish temples. And that interesting. She said, yeah, the Jews are trying to take this to get the third temple. So wait a huh. minute. She just confirmed that it was a uh, that the first and second Jewish temples were there. Thank you, Syrian girl, for That's confirming nice. the Jews were there first. That's very nice. You very, heard very it nice. from Syrian girl. You heard it from Syrian, you, girl. Syrian girl. If you didn't know it before, now you know it. Thanks to Syrian girl. If you know, you know. <clears throat> if you know, you know. All right. Enough of this chit chat. How are we going to just be sitting here running our mouths when we've got? Top G himself, Top G, his response to the attack. Plus, yeah. Who's Syrian girl when there's Top G, by the way? Oh, ISIS is back after a 10 year sleep. Must have been tired, <laughs> I guess. Totally believable. Totally believable. By the way, guess who ISIS really are? Uh, let me guess. Uh, the CIA and Mossad. And Ukraine, in Ukraine, maybe Andrew. Uh, I don't know. That that that's what I've been hearing. That's what I've been hearing right now. This is just this is uh, Andrew Tate, a person who knows nothing at all about history, about geopolitics, comes in and he's like, "Whoa, well, look at that! ISIS was gone for ten years, and now suddenly they're back." <laughs> they weren't gone for ten years. They weren't even gone for a month. Andrew Tate, why don't you shut up and stick to uh, cam girl businesses and those things? Yeah, isn't that crazy? So you have uh, Andrew Tate, who has no clue what's going on in the world because he's focused on uh, manipulating morons into uh, everything involving cam girls. Um, he doesn't pay any attention to what's going on in the world, thinks ISIS has been gone. And oh, shocker. Hey, this is the same with his 10 year claim here. This is the same guy who says he stopped the webcam stuff 10 years ago. 
It's good maybe point. maybe Tate's problem is he just has no concept of time. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point. Ten, ten minutes, ten years. What's the difference? It's all the same in my mind. <laughs> what a winner. What a winner. So anyway, that's the position of Andrew Tate. He did get community noted. ISIS published body cam videos from the attack, proving without doubt that they were in contact with the terrorists. All totally believable. <laughs> so think about this. He's saying, oh, yeah, ISIS had something to do with this. Oh, yeah, totally believable. Uh, ISIS actually, uh, these guys released the, the 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 footage, and, yeah, it came from ISIS. So hmm. I wonder if ISIS was like, hey, guys, did you see what Hamas did? Did you see the body cam footage and all that stuff that they published? It's It looks pretty good. We have to do a better job. We have to be better than them. So let's do this. Let's kill a bunch of uninvolved civilians and let's get some good footage. We need to do a better job. We are falling behind. And that's what they did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Islam, Islamic Indeed. terrorism. This. If the democracy works well, it is difficult to get voted by 60% or more. Presidential elections with 87% of the vote, it is a clear sign of dictatorship. It implies people are thinking the same way, fed by controlled media. So I'm guessing this is commentary on uh, on uh, Putin's Putin's uh, victory. There, there, there is that aspect which uh, is pointed out that Russia is... Um... Russia is suppressing media and controlling media and basically keeping it in the hand of, of pro-government uh, sides a lot and cracking down on oppositions with the excuse that the country is at war. So um, that, that definitely does play a role. Mm -hmm. uh, can some Muslim YouTubers be in a really bad situation? Huge Muslim following, but constantly proven wrong and no longer believes, but can't show it. So I guess it's talking about from the perspective of a Muslim YouTuber. You've got a huge following, but you're constantly proven wrong. And you don't even believe what you're saying anymore, but you can't show that because then you'd lose your big following. Think there's anyone like that, AP? Yeah, probably. Yes. Yeah, probably some, but you can't tell because they're going to say the same thing regardless. So if it's a secret, if it's a secret undercover ex-Muslim, but who wants to maintain his following, he's going to say the same thing he would say if he uh, actually believed it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'll see it when I believe it. Candace Owens is correct. We all owe apologies to the Muslims. We blame them for 9-11, Syria, Iraq, 10-7, just a human rights uh, act, just a human right act, Russia attack. I feel so bad for them. Why we always blame them. Yeah. And it didn't happen in a vacuum, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just so you know. Uh, Russia took Crimea to make border dispute to severely reduce Crimea Ukraine's... River. To make a border so dispute to severely reduce Ukraine's chance of joining NATO after U.S. backed a coup of Ukraine birthed anti-Russian pro-NATO government. Russia gave NATO and Ukraine a chance to sign a duck to not let Ukraine join NATO before war. Have you ever heard of punctuation? No, what's that? There is a period. <laughs> uh, Come on. Think about this. Ukraine, I don't hey, know. I can't follow. This, uh... Yes. This statement, devoid of punctuation, has one more period than Aisha had <laughs> when Muhammad started banging her. What? What's wrong with you? Oh, man. That's messed up. The attack was actually by man bear pig. Trust me, bro. It's definitely, oh, yeah, not, was, it's uh, definitely not ISIS. I heard that theory, too, and it sounds credible. Because if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, it must be man, bear, pig in disguise. Am I right, Michael Beacon? Or the Jews. Or the Jews who are controlling man, like bear. A they control man, like bear, a pig. Duck and walks like a duck. It is the Jews. Yeah. Mongols are the only ones to have ever conquered Russia, and that too in the winters. But Mongols were themselves the baddest people of all time. 
they were pretty messed up. They were pretty, 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 pretty messed, messed up. up. All right, who's up next, ladies and gentlemen? We oh, have Andrew Tate. Let's see. Uh, oh, it's got to be done. Didn't want to do it. Tried to avoid it, but. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the world's leading defender of child marriage and pedophilia in all its forms. Daniel Hakikachu. Beautiful. We've got a few by Daniel here because he's been posting nonstop. We'll look at a few of his uh, tweets. According to U.S. officials, ISIS's new branch, ISIS-K, <laughs> ISIS's new branch, ISIS guys, ISIS-K has been around for a while. According to U.S. officials, ISIS's new branch, ISIS-K, is now primarily interested in destroying Russia, Iran, and Afghanistan. Selecting out these specific countries as targets seems rather bizarre, unless you understand ISIS. One Sunni, one Shia, one Christian. What do these three have in common? Is it just a coincidence that these states are opponents of the U.S. and supporters of Palestine? Um... Well, there, there is one thing to point out here. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm checking here once again to refresh my memory of it, but also to add more to it. Now he says, um, ISIS's new branch, ISK, so Islamic State Khorasan. Uh, this is not really a new branch. No, it's not, he, get, he gets, it he is, gets community noted on that. It has been, it has existed for nearly 10 years now hang on hang on um, hang on hang on let's see if the community notes agree with you let's check it <laughs> readers added context <laughs> misleading isis k is the isis branch operating out of the <laughs> horizon province they are not new <clears throat> daniel having been around since at least 2015 one stated goal of isis is to target apostate regimes in the Arab world, their enemies include Lebanese, Hezbollah, Al Qaeda, and Assad. So, guess what? But it's yes, nicely. they go after Sunnis. They'll go after Precisely. Sunnis if they don't if they don't side with the Caliphate. They go after Shias because they regard them as heretics. They'll go after Russian Christians if the Russian Christians are siding and supporting their targets like Assad and Iran. This all makes perfect sense to everyone except Daniel Hakikachu and the Dawagandas and their followers. They go after the sunny ones if they don't go after the Shiite ones. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, uh, I don't know why he is questioning why ISIS is targeting these places, considering that the ISK Khorasan spe specifically targets that area. Khorasan refers to that historic area, which is in the northern part of Iran. And not, not Israel? Northern histo not historic Israel? Iran. Because <laughs> he's really confused no, by why no. they're not going after Israel. No, no, no. Everyone's confused Absolutely. about why they're going after and why they're not going after Israel. Everyone, everyone. We're about to, we're, we're going to see more. They, they, no one has any clue why they're not going after Israel. So that branch of ISIS is specifically targeting those areas. And by the way, ISIS doesn't just have that one branch. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, at least over 12 different province branches. So I don't even know what to say anymore. Daniel Hakikachu. Well, he actually responds to the community note. Oh boy. Oh boy. See Daniel's response. So there's his response to the community note. Well, they're desperately trying to community note my post, but it makes no sense. How does one stated goal of attacking apostate regimes in the Arab world explain them attacking two non Arab? Muslim countries, Iran, Af namely the area that they're in. <laughs> My, oh, wow. And one Christian one. Try again, Mossad. Oh. He says, try again, Mossad. So the community notes are actually, according to Daniel <laughs> Kikachu, <laughs> community notes are controlled by Mossad here, folks. You heard it from Daniel Hakikachu. Wow, everyone is, everyone has, I don't know how, 
gosh, why, if Mossad controls Twitter, I, I mean, how are they even letting Daniel Hakikachu continue posting? Isn't that weird? You know what's funny? I'm actually a community notes contributor. Uh, let me let me see my latest uh, my latest stats here to just brag about my stats. Uh, I have been regularly voting community notes and also writing community notes. And um, in fact, I have a top writer community note writer badge, um, and had have have like a dozen or so community notes that were so far um, sh publicly approved and shown to people. And all of this happened despite the fact that I'm not even part of the Mossad. Huh. Well, I mean, that's what you're saying now, but you do get the shekels. That's true. Okay. You're not well, part of the Mossad, I, but you work for Mossad. But guys, maybe I just exposed my price to the Mossad. Yeah. Yeah. Think about this, guys. Think about this, guys. The community note is meant to deal with Daniel's confusion over whether they would target a Sunni nation, right? So he's, he's confused. Like, why would, why would ISIS-K be going after Sunnis, Shias, and Christians? Well, do the math. Daniel, do you, are you really confused as to why ISIS, who believes that the caliphate cannot take over the world until you deal with every form of heresy in the Muslim world, which the main form of that, according to Sunni Muslims, would be Shia Islam. Are you really con are you really confused by why ISIS would go after Shias? Are you confused? Does that does that not make sense to you? Why? And then, and, and then, so what's the other confusing part? The other confusing part is uh, why they would be going after something like Afghanistan when. That's, they're not, they're not Shias there. They're Sunnis. Okay. The community note was these guys go after apostate regimes. So if they're not, uh, if they're not fully in line with ISIS, then they are not submitting to the caliphate. And just like Abu Bakr said, if you're not doing what the caliphate says, he's coming to kill you. He's regarding you as an apostate. But Daniel Hakikachu is very, uh, he, he just doesn't get it. I, he doesn't understand why ISIS, who goes after apostate regimes, is going after what they regard as an apostate regime. And then Russia, huh, well, that's, that's, that's Christian. Why would they be going after Christians? It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Daniel. What would they do? You're saying it makes no sense for why ISIS-K would go after the nation that has been crushing ISIS for many years now that ruined their plans in Syria and that that sides with Iran. You don't, uh, you just don't get it. You don't understand. Are you actually this insanely stupid or do you just know that your followers are? And so you can say whatever you want to them because they're morons. Which is it? You're a moron or you're actually smart, but you know you're talking to morons. Which is it, Daniel? That's the only, th that's the only way you could you could post a tweet about being confused by why ISIS, who believes they are the only group and everyone else has to submit to them and anyone who doesn't, they all have to be attacked. That's why you'd be confused by whether why they're attacking multiple different groups. Are you stupid? To be fair, uh, to be fair, the fact that, so you, you keep saying that his fans are, are morons, which sounds very insulting. It's not their fault. I should have given morons. a content warning. Hmm? It's not their fault. Whose fault is it? I don't know. Inbreeding? Maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, take a couple super chats, and then we're gonna have we're gonna be back with more from Daniel Kikachu because this man don't stop. This man does not stop. He just keeps he keeps. This going. man like don't stop. This guy is the energizer bunny of pedophilia advocates. He just keeps going. And this going and man going. don't stop. Okay. Continue. Uh, Alan says, takes response, ISIS takes responsibility for terrorist attack. Conspiracy theorists. You see, it was the Ukrainian, American, Israeli, Norwegian, Jamaicans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why not toss the Norwegians and Jamaicans in there? Um, I, th I thought since it started like ISIS takes responsibility, I thought this is going to be turned into a, uh, draw your own conclusions. Comment. Yeah. Everyone knows it's you. Oh, it's about a Syrian girl. Everyone knows it's Ukraine. Is she thinking the, is she thinking the voices in her head are other people? Yeah. Like, how do you know what everyone thinks over there? I don't know. They if are. I were if I were Russian, even if I absolutely hated Ukraine, and I wanted Ukraine, 
if a bunch of jihadis screaming Allahu Akbar slaughter a bunch of people and then ISIS says it was uh, it was us and then they, hey, here's the footage in case you're doubting, I'd probably think it was ISIS. Uh, what's funny is these conspiracy theories, conspiracy theorists never accuse Russia or Putin of a false flag. Always the U.S. and Jews. Hint, second Chechen war. Um, Putin would never do something like that. No, 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 no. But but yeah, so by the way, there are conspiracy theorists who uh, accuse Putin of a, a false flag. So I did see that. I did see that. It's just not the general direction the, uh, the Dawagandists go. Can't be right. I don't believe you. Uh, coincidentally, horror show in Clockwork Orange was from Russian Horoso, which means good. That's good. That's that's different. That's different. Horror show. But yeah, a cl a clock, what I loved about clock, Clockwork Orange is that it had it like its own invented language with things mixed. It's kind of funny. Uh, did you see the Thneco and Christian Orthodox guy debate? I only watched. I only watched the discussion with uh, Chris. Hmm? I only watched the discussion with Sneeko and Chris. Um, but he did have more uh, discussions there. I'm sure I'll be checking those out. In fact, uh, yeah, we'd be happy to get those guys on with us again. Inshallah. Um, yeah. AI can make new hadiths fun game mo or chat gpt oh yeah hey that'd be uh have ai make some new hadith and then actually read them and say is this from muhammad or is it from chat gpt that would be a fun game <laughs> that's good uh we got some arabic there nice d says nato wait 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 wait, wait. get back to what? that get back to that don't tell me get what to do that. on my show don't tell me what to do yeah. It says, yeah, Sheikh Yabudi. Okay. <laughs> nice. That's, yeah. That's cool. NATO, like Sweden and Finland, initiation challenge was to attack Russia. Sounds legit. Yeah. Yeah. They just said, oh, we want to we want to mess with Russia. Oh, uh -huh. we're going to join <laughs> NATO. And not because Russia definitely wants to expand and we want protection. No, we just want to do that because we want to make them angry because that's what we do. Turkish occupation of Cyprus is almost 50 years old with churches being destroyed and turned into mosques. Not a peep from anyone though. Yeah, why? Hey, I mean, you've stop, got Israel. Stop talking trash about Turkey. Yeah, if Israel exists, there's nothing else in the world that even matters, as far as I can tell. Stop talking trash about Turkey. Uh, could splitting of the moon be done with a mini attire? What is that? Let the three yards diameter, 300 yards away, angular size of moon is actually quite small, would be epic. Probably, yeah. That's what you say. <laughs> it's not waterboarding if you use camel pee. <laughs> 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 <P> boarding. <laughs> uh, proof of David Wood's prophetic uh, prophethood argument from comedic excellence. That would be a good one. Huh. My live my That's live streams are the funniest. Therefore, I must come from Allah. Oh, yes. Hey, here. That's true. So, hey, this guy says uh, AP. He's correcting you. AP. I speak Russian. It wasn't during interrogations. It was during the arrest. They say, really? and I quote, "Low, oh, let's cut his blank off, shoot his leg. So he's saying these, that's Whoa. what these guys are saying. Let's cut his junk off, shoot his leg, etc." And the guy's, uh, oh, yeah, 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 I'm happy to talk here a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but did they actually do the thing, like the acts of... Uh... Like the, with with the one guy actually cutting his ears off and feeding them to him, I and mean, was that during the arrest or I, I don't I don't know. It's, it's pretty yeah, messed up. I, I would pretty, if, pretty messed up. even before all that stuff, even without knowing any specifics, if I had to guess what Russian uh, commandos or special forces or even like uh, special uh, police officers or something like that who are who are trained to deal with this sort of thing, if I had to guess what they're going to do if they capture some guys, I would bet that they are going to get a lot of information very, very, very quickly by whatever means it takes. That's what I would guess. But, 
But imagine you cause such permanent damage and you are totally convinced that you have the right guys, but it turns out that you don't have the right guys. <laughs> That'd be funny. I was just walking by. What are you doing here? <laughs> And you cut you, and you just cut some uh, <laughs> some person's ears off. Although uh, it wasn't really the right person, hey, you were I, just very convinced it was. I mentioned this a long time ago, but this was uh, <laughs> I was in this was in uh, this was at Saint Bride's Correctional Center. I was in the dorm. I'm just sitting there reading. There was only two of us in the entire dorm. Uh, everyone else is out working or on the weight yard or anything else. I'm sitting there reading, and this guy. Uh, they called him Big Pun because they called every every uh like a uh, guy who was uh, really big Big Pun for, for after the rapper. Uh, anyway, he walks by me and then walks back. I hear him. I hear him turn the water faucet on. Then he walks back and there's uh, he's carrying a television. You could, you could buy these little televisions. He's carrying a television and the thing's like leaking water as he goes along the floor. And then I'm like, hey, what's going on here? Well, it turns out he was he had grabbed someone else's. He didn't like this guy, so he grabbed his TV, went and stuck it under the faucet, filled it up with water, and then went and stuck it back on the on the guy's shelf. So, so I saw this anyway. Later that day, later that day, the dude whose TV got soaked, he thought someone else did it. He thought this other guy who didn't like him did it. And so all of a sudden, all of a sudden, pop! He starts busting this guy in the head with a lock. Right? I'm like, oh crap! I know, I know, he's not the one that did it. Right? So he's 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 blasting the wrong guy. He's smashing. He's he's got blood all over the guy's head. He's bashing the wrong guy's head in with a master lock. So I like have to actually run over there. Hey, he didn't do it. He didn't do it, which puts me in the awkward position because I'm not going to snitch on who did it. But at the same time, everyone now knows I know who I know exactly who did it because I'm specifying this guy definitely is not the one who did it. And uh, anyway, that's that situation of I mean, imagine you're minding your own business, not doing anything, and some guy just starts busting your head open with a lock. And you're and cracking your skull, and is you had you did nothing. You did nothing. He just well, we're gonna assume that's you. That would be like one of these guys. Like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, that's my ear. What's my ear? What are you doing? What are you doing? I just came to get some vodka. <laughs> that's really messed up. It's pretty that's messed, really up. messed up. Oh, here you got dumb yeah. question. Who? What is Mossad? Want to break that down? What's, um, what's Mossad? Mossad, Mossad is the, the 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 Israeli equivalent of the CIA. Yeah, he's their basically their intelligence agency who that also does things when that need to get done. Specifically outside of Israel. Yeah. You should have Tate defend Islam for a box of chocolates. Yeah, <laughs> he's obsessed with his little yeah. chocolates. It would be funny to see. Oh, because oh, I see from so much evil in the world that there must be an an equal but opposite force. And that force is Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> what a dope. Man. And, I, <laughs> and I know it. I could feel the power. I could feel the power of Islam as I rest the Quran on my balls. <laughs> I feel my testicles getting turbocharged when the Quran rests upon it in this picture. We're not making that up, guys. He posted a picture of him in just some Daisy Duke sitting there on his bed with the Quran resting on his balls. That is true. He did that. Thinking that he, he was impressed, thinking that he was impressing the Muslim community, and they're all like, "What are you doing with the Quran on your balls?" <laughs> it was the perfect move. X is the largest waste dump I've ever seen because only there they will blame Israel for 120 uh, kills, while they ignore kills of 1,200 by Hamas pork. Yep, but don't oh, call Hamas man. pork; that could be offensive. Imagine a Hamas it's jihadi. Very offensive. Imagine a Hamas jihadi shows up to the chat here and sees you calling these Hamas terrorists pork, which is very offensive to them because pork is unclean. You'd be calling them unclean. Just just think about how that would make them feel. And do better. Do better. Be a better person with your comments. Look what anyway, you've done. Yeah. Look what you've done to AP. She made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> These fools can't just check the terror actions happening after or before elections, such as Moscow and Riazan Sugar in 1999, Nord Oz 2002, Beslan 2004. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Late for the stream. Here's a little bit of Australian shekels for David. Oh, hi, AP. <laughs> 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 yeah, we love the Australian shekels. Our favorite, uh, our favorite are uh, Israeli shekels, but we love the Australian shekels uh, as well. I don't know. I don't know. You you always accuse Australians of being criminals. So how do you suddenly? They are. Yeah, that's why I like their shekels because I know it's a 
comes from bad sources, criminal criminal oh. activities. Okay, that makes so sense. So I like it that they give it to us because then we use it for good. We use what was evil for good. Uh, thoughts on Dood Kim, the Korean Muslim revert. You ever follow that story? Wasn't he like he, he like was accused of rape or something and then he reverted to Islam or something like that? I haven't heard of that guy in a thousand years. Yeah, I don't know enough about it to comment. I just saw some stuff on social media, but I've never followed the story. Uh, an ISIS branch. Do they sell franchises? Yes, apparently. You you too can have your own branch of ISIS. All right, let's get back to uh let's get back to our good friend Daniel for a few. Where are we on the Daniel scale? Oh, here we go. Oh, let me get this out. <clears throat> you heard it here, folks. Uh, still trying to work out why ISIS doesn't attack Israel. And Daniel says, it's a mystery for the ages, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. He got 10,000 likes. These are the, these are the Muslim uh, 2,000 retweets. It just doesn't this make sense why ISIS, who doesn't believe they will be successful in attacking... <coughs> And conquering the world until they deal, until they eliminate heresy and rebellion and so on from the Muslim community. Why aren't they going and fighting Israel? Because they don't believe that Allah will bless them to be successful until they deal with their problems within the Muslim community. Notice it's the opposite reasoning. It's the opposite reasoning from Daniel Hakikashu and all and all his fans and, and all the Dawa guys. They're all obsessed with. Hey, things really suck in the Muslim world. Let's blame everyone else and attack everyone else. That's what we'll do. ISIS says, no, if we're not conquering the world, that is a problem with us. We're doing it wrong. We're in disobedience to Allah. If Allah were on our side, we'd be conquering the world right now. He's not on our side. So we need to deal with why Allah is not on our side first. Then we worry about America. Then we worry about Israel. Then we worry about conquering the world after we deal with the hypocrisy and apostasy in our own community. Again, total opposite from Daniel and the rest of, uh, and so many other in the Dawah community where uh, things suck bad for us because it's everyone else's fault. <laughs> Everything is everyone else's fault. It, for ISIS, no, it's our fault. We deal with our problem first. This is so dumb. Isn't it? Isn't as, it, as, isn't I, it? I mean, as we said, these people are imbeciles. Uh, they can't think as far as ISIS does, for example. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Uh, I mean, it's inter as repulsive as ISIS is, and in a way, I mean, I mean, they're, they're, the stuff they do, it's worse than than the vast majority of Muslims ever do. But they're also the only ones who like use have any concept of introspection. Like, let's look at let's look at ourselves first instead of blaming the rest of the world, right? It's. <laughs> So in a way, they're the, they're the worst in terms of what they're actually doing in the world, but they're, they're, they have an advantage over everyone else in the sense that yeah. it's let, let's not sit back and just blame everyone else for why things suck so bad in the, in the Muslim world. Exactly. exactly. But Dan, Daniel still can't figure it out. It's a great mystery. It's a great mystery why ISIS, who's focusing on one thing, doesn't uh, focus on Israel like so many other people, including Daniel, just do. Everything's, everything's ISIS. Mm. I mean, everything's Israel. Everything's Israel. Every, it's all Israel. It's all Israel. It's all Israel. And they can't beat we Israel. Will never know. And they we can't beat never, Israel. Never. Yeah, they, they, they keep attacking Israel. Can't do anything with Israel. And then ISIS is like, why can't you beat Israel? I'll tell you why. Because you're a bunch of uh, apostates and hypocrites, and you, you don't enforce Sharia, and you don't purify your own community, and so you're never going to be successful. So we're not going that route. And Daniel, oh, I do, we don't get it. It just makes no sense. It's, it's a mystery for the ages. I have no idea why this is happening. More Daniel Hakikachu is such a crazy coincidence that Netanyahu and all the official Israeli outlets have spent six months spamming Hamas equals ISIS. And then ISIS wakes up one day and decides to attack Russia in a mass casualty event. And now all those same Israeli accounts have been nonstop spanning Proof that ISIS was behind the Ru proof in quotation marks that ISIS was behind the Russian attack. Nothing suspicious oh, about any of this, man. So look, this is the guy who is the who is the number one uh, apologist to so many 
imbeciles out there. It is just incredible that, that this guy is even taken seriously. He has the, the logical thinking skills of some random dude that you encounter in the street who doesn't know anything but thinks he does because he sees a pattern in everything that he looks at. Yeah, so guys, think about this. So uh, after the attack, after the attack, when some people, some people were saying, were defending Hamas and saying, well, Hamas has a point. They're just freedom fighters. In response to that, it became very, uh, very popular to be, uh, to, to post on social media, Hamas is ISIS. Why? You're saying, hey, you guys are actually defending these guys, thinking of them as freedom fighters when they're going around killing and slaughtering to get their way and to get land that they think belongs to them. That's what ISIS did. You're dealing with the same kinds of people with the same mentality. How, what kind of monster are you if you're defending Hamas? If you're defending Hamas, you're the same sort of person who would defend ISIS if Jews weren't involved. So they're making those kinds of points. Daniel takes it as no. So think about, guys, think about what he's actually saying here. He's saying this was a plan. This was the plot. So, so after October 7th, after October 7th, here's the plan. Here, here's what we'll do, guys. For months, we'll tweet Hamas is ISIS, and then we'll stage an attack by ISIS so that everyone goes, huh, you're right. ISIS is really bad and evil. But wait a minute. <laughs> I've seen it tweeted numerous times that Hamas is ISIS. I guess Hamas is bad. <laughs> That's his theory. That's to Daniel Hakikachu, the world's leading defender of pedophilia. That makes sense. That makes more sense than ISIS attacked Russia because Russia has been destroying ISIS for many years. That makes more sense in his in his brain. So, uh, so stupid. This is Dawa, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dawa. All right, one more from Daniel Hakikachu here. Up, oh, it's a long one here. <clears throat> He's explaining how it benefits Israel, and therefore, since it benefits Israel, it must be the Jews. It is it not must difficult. Be the Jews. It is not difficult at all to see how Israel benefits from this, like they have benefited from ISIS and Qaeda false flags for the past decade. So Israel's behind all these ISIS and Al-Qaeda false flags, ladies and gentlemen. It's Israel. So he probably believes that they were behind 9-11 and all these other attacks and so on. You create animosity in the population against Muslims, thus undermining support. I mean, Daniel, Daniel, if we took these kinds of conspiracy theories seriously, that Israel is behind all these terrorist groups and Israel is the one that's pulling the strings in order to discredit Muslims and create animosity in the population against Muslims. If I were to believe this, if I were to believe that this is how Israel is dealing with Islam, you would be at the top of the list as an Israeli plant, Daniel. You, you would be my number one. If I were to say, huh, if anyone on the planet is an Israeli plant because Israel is doing is, is pulling strings behind the scenes in order to spread mistrust about the Muslim community, I would probably say they're funding and supporting the guy who runs around defending who and thinks that the most important thing in the world to defend is child molestation and defend it from the Muslim sources. You are the perfect example of someone I would think, this guy's a plant. If I were to say that this is how Israel is spreading uh, a negative view of the Muslim community. You and Ali Dawa and Mohammed Ijab and Sheikh Uthman would be at the top of the list. I, I, I don't believe that you guys are faking. But if I were to say, if I were to find out some people in the Dawa community are complete fakes, you, Daniel, would be at the top of the list. Way, way higher than ISIS jihadis, as far as people who are inserted by Mossad to make the Muslim community look bad and to spread animosity toward the population of Muslims. You, you, sir, are doing that every bit as effectively as ISIS is. <clears throat> it was the perfect plant. <laughs> but here's what Daniel the plant, Kikachu, says uh, as he uh, is picking up his shekels from Mossad. 
It is not difficult. It is not difficult at all to see how Israel benefits from this, like they have benefited from ISIS and Al Qaeda false flags for the past decade. You create animosity in the population against Muslims, thus undermining support for Hamas and other anti-Israel Muslim governments, Iran, Yemen, Hezbollah, in Russian society. There is a reason why official Israeli accounts have spent the past six months spamming Hamas equals ISIS. Yes, because this has all been part of the plan. They knew they were going to do this in Moscow. That was part of the plan. Not to mention warning, threatening the world that if you don't support Israel, the scary Muslim terrorists will strike your Western countries next. What an amazing... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That is a slogan in Israel that has been going around for a very long time now. That's not anything new. That's not something that started on October 7. Uh, in Israel, actually, the, the slogan, the West is next, is something that is known among the common population. That's what they, that's what they say in Israel. Uh, and, and they have been issuing these warnings forever, forever, that... Um, that if you let these Islamists uh, hold free reign in, in their terrorist attacks in Israel, if they were hypothetically done with Israel, they would continue toward the West. That is the general idea. That, that is nothing new. <laughs> um, no, it's new. Daniel says it is. Uh, so oh, well. what an amazing coincidence that that, that that is exactly what happened. Yeah. Isn't it an amazing coincidence that Israel warned people, hey, Muslims are going to Muslims are going to launch terrorist attack because it takes it takes Israel to warn people about that. We could have never figured out that jihadis yeah. want to launch terrorist attacks. We, you know, it's, no we, we just found that out. We just found that out. We yeah. just found that out in the past six months that Muslim there are Muslims who, who want to uh, carry out terrorist attacks. Wait, there are Muslims who want to carry out terrorist attacks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we found that. Yeah. Didn't you learn anything from Israel while you were there? They told you that. Weird, weird. Huh. What makes absolutely no sense is why a radical Muslim group would choose to target Russia at this what? moment. A radical, why would they target Russia? I don't understand at all. Why would a radical Muslim group that has been repeatedly crushed by Russia choose to attack Russia at this moment and not Israel, which hasn't been crushing them at all and which has some of the same enemies like Iran, i.e. the country currently engaged in genociding Muslims and threatening to overtake Islam's third holiest site. If the leaders of Gaza are Hamas and Hamas is on a completely different side, and they refuse to submit to the caliphate, how much does ISIS care about what Israel is doing to Hamas? Not a bit. According to Daniel, ISIS, which has a completely different focus from his focus, ISIS is supposed to say, you know what? We regard Hamas as heretics and apostates for not submitting to the caliphate. And so we're going to go beat up Israel for beating up Hamas, the guys we regard Ooh. as heretics and apostates who are being Ooh. defeated, who are being defeated because they are in rebellion against Allah. We want to rush in and help those guys. That's that's this is Daniel Hakikic, ladies and gentlemen. We want to be Russian. Instead of militarily attacking them, Israel. These crazy, rationally inscrutable Muslims attack Russia, the group that's been crushing ISIS for years, i.e. one of the main countries that has shown meaningful opposition to Israel in the past months. It all adds up. This is how conspiracy theories work, ladies and gentlemen. This is how they work. Um... You talk to a bunch of morons who don't understand how anything works. They would assume, oh, if ISIS is a is a is an Islamic terrorist group, their main focus is going to be Israel. When if you look at what their actual goals are, Israel is an afterthought. You have to deal with other things, other groups, other nations. Then and only then will Allah bless you to conquer Israel. So they focus on all the groundwork and then worry about the other things later. Daniel is of the mindset, no, we just have to mindlessly keep attacking the same group that keeps crushing us over and over and over again until all of Gaza is a pile of rubble. And what's and, funny and, is it, this doesn't even sound smart. It doesn't even sound compelling. 
I guess it sounds smart to you if you are a complete imbecile and you have the thinking capacity of a goat. Mm -hmm. um, but to a, to a normal, intelligent human being, this, none of this sounds remotely intelligent. No, the creep. The, cre they go with yeah, it. Yeah. the creepy part is these guys. I, I mean, you've got a population of two billion worldwide to draw on, as far as. Can you find people who are stupid enough to 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 agree with you and then to freak out over Israel? Nope, Israel's definitely behind this. Israel's definitely behind this. You go to a different nope, nope. Uh uh Ukraine's definitely behind this. It's clearly, it's clearly Ukraine. Go to a different group. CIA, it's definitely the CIA. And then you get the oh no, it's CIA and Mossad and Ukraine all working together. What's the one thing it can't possibly be? ISIS, the group that Russia's been fighting. It can't, it can't just be ISIS saying, hey. They're focused on Ukraine. Now's our chance to get in there. They're not paying attention to Muslims right now. Let's get in there. Nope, can't be, can't be that. But ICE is over here. No, we did it. That was us. No, 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 you're lying. You're lying. Mossad told you to lie. These guys are lunatics, man. That makes so much sense. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. All right, guys. We'll uh, take some more, take a more, few more super chats, and then we'll uh, check out uh, our last star of the day is uh, last Suleiman Ahmed. Does anyone notice that oh. Hikikachu looks like a Moai with his stupid hat? I don't know what that is. What's a Moai? You know what a Moai is? Those things. Those stone. Um, oh, those stone things. No, structures. I don't know. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it. Uh, hey, did you break my chocolates? I guess that's referring to Tate. <laughs> Do yes. you think Tate got a new Bugatti from his deal? He should. If he didn't Humble. get it, if he didn't get it, he should get a Bugatti for every tweet. Yeah, that's what we get for every tweet, for and for every every video, every moment we get shekels. Yeah, so. I get piles and piles of shekels. Jews yeah, invented a time machine to go back and give the prophet shekels in return for starting Islam. Thus, Mossad was behind the terrorist attack. Yeah, that does make sense. <laughs> Doing something like that. Yeah, uh, Babylon, the great. The great harlot's mother of all false religion, mystery written on her forehead. She will fall via the UN. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, once Babylon, the great mother of all false religion, falls via the UN, then the great tribulation will start. Revelation 16, 17. Y'all believe that when I see it. In, in hey, hey, that channel, na that, that account name was uh, change comes from within. That's basically the mentality of ISIS. Deal with yourself first and then change. Then change Coincidence? No, not, I, I, no, I'm just saying that there's a, there's a, there's an idea. If I want to change first, I, I need to start with myself. And that's what, awesome. that's what ISIS gets right. They just, they get it completely wrong by clinging to Islam and going, going the way that uh, jihadis have dealt with things in the past. So what you're saying is that the commenter here was, was ISIS. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. What do Muhammad's, what do Muhammad's robe and an aircraft and an aircraft carrier have in common? Yes. Oh, I'm guessing they hold lots of semen. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about. It. I was thinking, what's the joke here? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, Tate kept the Quran upright on his woody. Yep. Alhamdulillah. Uh, what hat is the solution to radical Islam? What hat? I don't know if a hat's going to fix a problem. I think it would be a red hat. Yeah. Um, but if you're talking about what's the solution to radical Islam, I would say exposing Muhammad. They didn't yep. say solution, it said hat. Yeah. A hat that helps you expose Islam. So a hat that has basic factual information about Muhammad that exposes mm -hmm. Muhammad. And do you guys think there's hope for these people online who think Israel is behind mm -hmm. every bad thing that's ever happened in history, or are they lost? There is no <clears throat> No, I think there's, yeah, I think, I mean, for some of them, some of them are obviously going to spend the rest of their lives blaming Israel for everything. Oh, no. Oh, no. Someone broke into my car. It was the Jews. Oh, I can't pay there my rent. No it's the Jews. So you can be, you can be programmed for that. I mean, keep in mind, it it is uh 
once you once you have someone to blame for everything that sucks in your life, that's convenient because you don't have to blame yourself for anything. And so that can kind of feel good. But it's just pathetic. It's just pathetic. And so we need to make them realize how absolutely pathetic it is. Oh, the Jews, anything that sucks is the Jews. <laughs> most Russian forces in Ukraine. Yeah, most Russian forces are in Ukraine. ISIS on opening. Yeah, again, ISIS wants attention. ISIS wants to uh, be a threat to Russia. ISIS has all sorts of reasons for doing it right there. And yeah, you know you're in a time where Putin does not want a two-front war. Yeah, that's true. What if Daniel <laughs> Daniel Pikachu and Islam and the Muslim cowboy started a daycare center? My goodness, I <laughs> I would go off, guys. I would be posting on that every single day for the rest of my life <laughs> if that happened. Because <laughs> man, man, oh man, oh man. Uh, D Wood, please check Fox News headlines. Activists call for white churches to pay reparations. Uh, not a topic I'm terribly interested in. What? Why not? This is the most important topic. AP, I sent perfect topic. AP, I sent the video on X to you right now. Bitte überprüfen. Bitte überprüfen. Send it to you. AP can't play videos though from his side, so he'll have to check that out at a different time. God bless you all. Thank you. Uh, American exceptionalist David thoughts on Cliff Knickle, solid apologist Cliff Knick, yeah don't have Knick. any not familiar with him Th and that isn't saying anything about him uh, I might just I mean I don't pay attention to most things that are going on in the world so he may be the greatest apologist of all time I wouldn't know oh yeah you put it out uh, you read it wrong I said Bugoi. Yeah. Give Tate another Bugoi for his tweet. Yeah, that is right. Ooh. Have you seen the UN meditation meditation room? No, I have not. Sorry about that. I have not seen the Jeez. UN meditation room. What? Okay, I just I just saw the video. <laughs> video of what? What's of in the, it? Of the, the Russian oh, security. Or just... were they were they messing with him hard? Yeah. Oh. Was it bad? It looks bad. I, I, I don't have, I'm not <clears throat> saying that uh, Russia is the good guy here in anything at the moment, but no, especially they're, after that. No, no, they're, the yeah, they're not. Um, it's like, it's like if Saddam caught a terrorist who just did something horrible, he's still Saddam. I don't like Saddam, but Saddam so would be, Saddam would be getting information out of that guy. And I would want him to get information out of that terrorist, even if I don't ordinarily, even if I didn't ordinarily like Saddam or something like that. And it would be satisfying to watch for me. If you're a creepy psychopath like AP. <clears throat> All right, guys, a couple, uh, couple of tweets from Suleiman, and then we will uh, wrap things up. Uh, breaking Hamas. Oh, here we have from Hamas. Breaking Hamas official statement on Moscow terror attack. We in the Islamic resistance movement, Hamas, condemn in the strongest terms the terrorist attack that targeted civilians in the Russian capital, Moscow, and left dozens <laughs> dead and wounded. We extend our sincere condolences to the Russian leadership and people and to the families of the victims of this criminal attack. And we wish a speedy recovery to the injured. And we express our full solidarity with Russia, its people, and the families of the victims in this tragedy, from the perspective of ISIS jihadis, you just you just said we side with Russia, its people. We have full solidarity with Russia, the nation that has been crushing ISIS for years. This is what Hamas says about an ISIS attack. They say, hey, ISIS, we are against you. We're actually on the side, same side with Russia. And mean, in the meantime, you've got Daniel Hakikachu. Well, if ISIS is really behind this, why wouldn't they be helping Hamas against Israel? I don't get it because we're all on the same side and we're all, we, we, we all support each other. So it makes no sense why, why ISIS wouldn't be helping Hamas who keeps condemning them for their attacks because this is how things work in Daniel Hakikachu land. Yeah, it's clear, quite obvious to ISIS. Uh, ISIS and Hamas have been at odds for a while because Hamas uh, 
makes strategic alliances with <clears throat> this specific axis, which is uh, which consists of um, Syria, Russia, Iran, and the others. And ISIS is against them. ISIS, you could say, is more loyal to um, their Islamic ideals than ISIS than than Hamas is, and uh, Hamas basically considers them traitors for their alliances with Russia and and Iran and all that. Yep. Um, that's what's happening here. Yeah, that's what's, that's what's hilarious. It's like, a, oh, ISIS is secretly aligned with the Jews. <laughs> like, wait, that's the opposite <laughs> of ISIS. Yeah. That's what yeah. everyone else does, tries to form alliances <laughs> and so on. ISIS is, no, we can't do that sort of thing because that is why Allah will not bless us. It's only when you depend on Allah alone and you 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 destroy every bit of hypocrisy, apostasy among you, enforce Sharia fully, that's when you will take over the world. Like, oh, you see, it's the Jews. The Jews are behind it all. People are stupid. Uh, video of the second terrorist of the Moscow attack. Don't do Israel's bidding. So look, he's actually condemning this dude. See, shame on this guy for doing Israel's bidding. This is what you get for doing Israel's bidding, according to Suleiman Ahmed. This guy nuts. <laughs> he's like insulting this guy and saying, you see, this is what happens to you when you carry out an attack for Israel. Suleiman Ahmed, another reason you should not be a terrorist for anyone, especially the Israelis. Look at this guy, I got the crap beat out of him. You shouldn't do a terrorist attack for the Israelis, everyone. Suleiman Ahmed, Suleiman Ahmed, guy who uh, attacks Andrew Tate's victims for him to, to, uh, to blame the victims and try to silence them. What a scumbag. Yeah, like like the worst people in the world become the most popular spokesman for it. Isn't it weird? Like the worst people in the world become the become the popular spokesman for Islam. It's it's, it's almost like uh, like right now with with Hamas, the worst states, the worst regimes in the world are currently siding with Hamas. Yeah, closely neo neo Nazis, yeah. neo Nazis, socialists, everyone. Yeah. Uh, Soleiman says the Taliban condemned the terrorist attack on Moscow. Yeah, you mean the Taliban that ISIS regards as an apostate regime that they want to mm -hmm. conquer as well? Hmm. We condemn in the strongest terms the recent terrorist attack on Moscow and consider it a blatant violation of all human standards. Gosh, when the Taliban are telling you you're too brutal and wrong. Oh my goodness, that's ISIS for you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you but know what? About the thing, by the way, about Hamas's condemnation of uh, of ISIS attacking civilians. Um, so far, Hamas still hasn't condemned what happened on October seven, when uh, a very similar thing happened when their own people attacked the Nova Music Festival and killed over 360 people. They probably didn't condemn it because they were the ones who did it. So apparently, uh, yeah, so they don't care about targeting civilians. When they target civilians, when they target Jews, it's completely uh, justifiable and legitimate. But of course, if they're allies in Russia, if, if they get attacked by other terrorists who are just like them, then that is, of course, worthy of condemnation. Yeah. So, guys, think about again. As far as Daniel's concerned, it makes no sense for ISIS to be a, to not be attacking Israel and to be against to be against Afghanistan. That's a Sunni Muslim country. Yeah. The yeah the the Taliban condemns ISIS. ISIS condemns the Taliban. Hamas condemns ISIS. ISIS condemns Hamas. They are not on the same side. We think of them all as terrorists, and we think they're all on the same page. They're not. These guys would destroy each other in a heartbeat. How? How can Daniel be this stupid? I do not know. Unless he's paid, unless he's paid by Mossad to make to make his community look stupid. Suleiman Ahmed, ISIS threatened Hamas. ISIS threatened Hamas. Yeah, they did. Hamas condemns ISIS. ISIS threatens Hamas. ISIS, ISIS threatens, threatens Hezbollah. Hamas. Yes. ISIS is against everyone who does not side with ISIS. This is not rocket science, Suleiman. ISIS threatened Hezbollah. ISIS threatened Assad. Yep. Wrong sect of Islam. 
ISIS threatens Israel's enemies. Explain why. Do you, do you really need us to explain it, Suleiman? Do you really need us to explain that ISIS believes it is the caliphate, Hamas refuses to submit to the caliphate, and therefore, just as Abu Bakr said, if you do not submit to the caliphate, he's coming to kill you and regarding you as an apostate, that's what ISIS is going to do. Do you really not understand why they go after groups that they regard as heretical, like Hezbollah? Do you really need that explained? Are you seriously this insanely stupid? Soleiman. One of, one of life's great mysteries here. And finally, final tweet from uh, Suleiman. Hey, it's ISIS. Nope, it's the CIA and Mossad. Ha ha! Good one. Good one, Suleiman. <laughs> You're doing a great Whoa. job. That's so right. original. Who when never, I, who, I never ever, whoever said this before, nobody ever said this. ISIS spends months, I mean months, planning an attack. They finally, finally carry it out. And Suleiman here, nope, it's actually the CIA and Mossad. Have really. some respect. Have some respect for their efforts. <clears throat> nope. Poor, 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 poor. ISIS can no longer, can no longer carry out a terrorist attack and get credit for it because Israel will be blamed and the CIA and Ukraine. So that's the situation they're in. Sucks to be you, ISIS. Sucks to be you. You suck, ISIS, but still sucks to be you, even though you suck. Yeah. But now you're in a situation you can't even get credit anymore because of uh, online Muslim conspiracy theorists. Wow, 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 wow. Poor ISIS. All right, uh, got two more super chats here, and then we'll wrap it up. Do you think Tate is texting the guys he scams while lying on his stomach with his feet in the air while he giggles like a teenage girl? <laughs> so is he on his bed going, "Oh, really? Oh, you're so big and strong and manly. Let me tell you what you want, what I want you to do to my boobies." And it's actually Andrew Tate. Not only that, he also. Uh texts with those people whenever he's bored he's like oh, oh that's true yeah and he's sending yeah. yeah yeah he's chatting with them on his phone he said he sits there and would chat okay. with them. guys if you don't know what we're talking about you, you have to watch previous episodes but andrew tate has said that when he was uh uh when he was doing uh the the cam girl stuff for years he had the cam girls on camera but he's the one communicating with the guys behind the scenes pretending to be the cam girls so this is Andrew Tate. Oh, I just want you to wrap your big manly arms around me and do all this <laughs> stuff to me. Oh, I just want to open my mouth and blah, blah, blah. That was Andrew Tate, the top G, talking to uh, guys. And this is this uh, super strong Alpha Chad. This is what a real man does. He pretends to be a hot woman and texts these guys online and talks about all the things that he wants to do to them. This is what a real mm -hmm, man does. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you're not a real man, you will end up like wearing a Barbie shirt like this. Mm -hmm. you see? Yep, that is true. That is true. Isn't that amazing? Like, like Tate's fans would be like, if they saw you, be like, oh, you're not a real man. You're wearing a Barbie shirt. <laughs> A real man is someone who sits around pretending to be a cam girl talking about talking about uh, wanting all these guys to bone him <laughs> and ram all his holes. <laughs> these guys are these guys are nuts, man. What they regard as a real man. It is the perfect man. <laughs> a real man is someone who pretends to be a woman all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to make guys fall in love with him. Think about this. He, he's an expert at getting girls to fall in love with him. And then he used that same skill to get guys to fall in love with him. He has guys who are in love with what they think is a woman on the other end of, uh, of the chat. And it's actually Andrew Tate getting guys to fall in love, to fall madly, insanely in love with him. That's beautiful. your top. That's your top G. That is beautiful. All these ignorant people blaming Israel, ISIS, Ukraine, Putin, the CIA, etc. Anyone with a brain knows it was the wingalings. That's true. And if you wanted to, <laughs> if you want to just say, well, so and so might be behind this, that's true. But you should put the wingalings uh, on that list as well because it's possible. You don't know. If it's possible, yeah. it's probable. If it's probable, it's certain. That's how things work in the realm of conspiracy theories, ladies and gentlemen. So wingling should be recognized as a global terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good. I might, I might, I might start using that. 
And the last super chat is from Mrs. Apostate. She says, for your information, really? the phrase Christ is king is trending on X, but it is being used as an anti-Semitic dog whistle for white Christian nationalism. I actually, you remember Sneeko and Nick Fuentes were saying this. They made it a slogan among the groipers. Christ is king, Christ is king, Christ is king, Christ is king. So they made it this thing so that anyone who says Christ is king is like bringing up the they're using it in a different sense. They're using it as like, uh, uh, yeah, we need our white. We need our white Christian nation. Which I don't know why Sneeko is saying it, but uh, he just hangs out with He just does whatever. Whoever he's hanging out with, whatever they do, that's what uh, that's what Sneeko starts doing. Um, but, yeah, so it is creepy that you take a group and they can completely ruin something. People can ruin people can ruin things, ladies and gentlemen, like. During the time of Jesus, Judas was one of the most common popular names there was. You don't see people getting named Judas anymore. Why? Because Judas ruined that. Uh, people people before Adolf had that little mustache look. He kind of ruined it. And he took out the name Adolf with him. Not a popular name. Not nearly as popular a name as it was before. And now you've got the Groipers ruining Christ is King. They're ruining Christ. I, I, is wanted, king. I, I wanted to name my child Adolf, but then I thought oh, it kind of doesn't work because of Hitler. So yeah, I didn't it wouldn't work. They ruined it. They were they ruined it. People can people can ruin things. Now people are gonna ruin Christ as King. Bunch of stupid, and by the way, this bunch is bunch of stupid racist. This is by the way, um you know what they do. So um they start using the phrase Christ is king on 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 social media, and then when people uh when people start turning this or, or complaining about this or, or pointing this out, they then go around and say, "Oh, look at this! Now they're saying, uh, now they're, they're they're implying that saying Christ is King is anti-Semitic. See, this is what they really are. They are just against Christianity. They want they want Jewish supremacy and so on. But but this is this is their this is an actual strategy. This is what they are actually doing. And some people might not understand this if they're not familiar with the with the Groypers, the current neo Nazis, the Nick Fuentes crowd. But um the entire strategy of the Groypers, as they call themselves, of Nick Fuentes's people, is to um is to sneak into Huh, regular sneak. mainstream <laughs> mainstream conservative crowds for example or mainstream religious crowds or mainstream uh, traditionalist crowds and normalize neo nazi thoughts within those crowds to win more people over this is this was the whole idea like they would get into into the into conservative gatherings and uh, start normalizing neo-Nazi talking points among those conservatives in order to associate these neo-Nazi talking points with conservatives and bring it to the uh, media's attention, uh, and so on. And they are doing the very same thing with the slogan, for example, with by using "Christ is King" um, everywhere within a neo-Nazi context, they're trying to win regular Christians over and also form this image of, look, they have a problem with us saying Christ is king yeah. because they are against yeah, Christians. That's the, that's the goal, right? Christians yeah, you start, you start saying like, Christ like is us. king, you start saying Christ is yeah. king and they know it's coming from neo-Nazis and so they start responding to that sort of thing. No, stop yeah, saying yeah. that, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you see, they're attacking us for saying Christ is king. You see, everyone, Look, they're, they're anti-Christian. Let's see, all unite. Let's all unite against them, Christians. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for idiotic This is, this is yeah. the strategy. This is a strategy. That's what they're doing. That's yeah, don't fall do. for that nonsense, ladies and gentlemen. Um, top C here, Catholic cowboy, jihad, shekels for the children. Love you, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you say the Bibles has been debunked in Ali Dawa's voice? The Bibles <laughs> is being debunked, yeah? Yeah. And, and we're I, proud of that, And we're yeah? proud of that. Because I know more than Allah. Allah said the Bible's been, yo, it's as good as gold, yeah. And that's why everyone got to judge by it. But yo, you know, us modern Dawah guy, we know better than Allah. Isn't it? Allah is stupid, yeah. Allah doesn't know. Trust me, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the king of the Jews is now a Nazi. Yeah, that's what's funny. It's <laughs> Jesus, king of the Jews. <laughs> yeah. And he's a Nazi yeah. against Jews. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. And we have Tracy here. Christ is king. I don't care what anyone says or believes. 
Indeed, I agree that Christ is king. And I mean, maybe I you just... could add something to that, and you could maybe you could uh, it, like publicly comment on it and say Christ is king, and then add something. And he to can't it, stand, like, and he will judge Nazis or something like that. <laughs> something like that, maybe I don't know. Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we have gone through uh, some of the most popular conspiracy theories about the attack in Russia. All notice all of them. All of them. They all follow Heavy the exact control. same method. They they all pretend, or they legitimately just don't know because they're stupid. But they all pretend that uh, oh, th th this thing, this doesn't make sense here. Why would ISIS be doing that when it's exactly? Anyone who knows anything about ISIS knows is exactly the sort of thing they were doing. But it doesn't make sense that it's ISIS. Therefore, it must be this other thing that just doesn't fit anything and that there's no evidence for. And once you once you say, oh, it doesn't make sense that ISIS has done this, then it just becomes anything, anyone you want to blame, anyone you don't want to like, anyone you don't like in the world, you just say, again, it, it could be anything. You could say, oh, so-and-so from Zimbabwe is behind this. How do I know? Well, so-and-so from Zimbabwe, there was a guy from Zimbabwe who took a trip to Russia right before the attack. How's that? How could that? What? Was he carrying a secret message from Zimbabwe to give the orders for the attack? Oh, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, if you're a moron. If you're a total oh. moron, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be stupid, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be stupid. Uh, become hard what targets. What if I want to be stupid? Well, then you're, you're, you should become a die. Um, <laughs> don't be stupid. <laughs> become a hard target. Learn how manipulators manipulate people and make sure that you know their tactics better than they do so that you do not fall for them. All right, AP. I'm sure we'll be back sometime this week sometime this week yes little uh oh little side note if you guys didn't see if you didn't see um if you did not see ap's interview with visagrad uh black angel just shared it in the chat once we're oh, yeah, done if, once we sign out here you, no go ahead if you did not see that interview you should definitely head over and have a look at that instead of Russian to conclusions. Yeah. But Black yes. Angel has been putting it in the chat. See, therefore, I can do it too. I can do it too. See? Who can play nice. that game? All right, guys. So, yeah, once we're done here, uh, go ahead and check out that interview of AP being interviewed on his ideas and leaving Islam while walking through the Muslim quarter in Jerusalem. Muslim quarter of Jerusalem. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll be back sometime this week with some more stuff because there's just too much stuff to keep up with. So too catch you all much. later.